where we left off last week, um, several of the party members journeyed into Melitus, found out that they were just decoys, had a night on the town, and uh, Agrios ended up uh, irritating some of the council and going before the uh, head of the temple, or the sacrificial altar to be proper, of Mogus. They are all back, taking what little rest they can from their early morning hours of their late night drunken partying. But we're going to pick up a little bit earlier, at the point where Ariana and Adrastos had separated from the group to go after their unnamed friend, well, I guess he's named now the Mementar, so we're going to stick with that one, I think, and uh, decided to journey after him and make sure that he was going well along the path. So where we pick up, you're all traveling along and you see the path, you see the trail in front of you. You obviously can tell his footprints in the mud. They, they show up pretty clearly and all's good until they suddenly veer off and head at a 90 degree to the road off into the wilderness. That can't be good. And at this I can't point, help I think feeling responsible where... for it. Yep. I'm sure my map drawing was rudimentary. It's been some time since I've drawn one. Oh, wait. You drew it on his stomach. He's probably looking at it upside down. Exactly. Well, I can't Should... in good conscience just let him go. I agree. But we... I oh, will uh, turn to Agrios. You think you can keep them safe for a day or so without us? I think we kind of ran off, didn't we? I think we've already. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> where are you? Are you? I don't think you guys I mean, are with us, are you? They're they're looking I mean, at this I, as I, the point where they separated from oh, us. Oh, are we? Still be we're with we're the group, we're so. we're doing yeah, a flashback. Yeah, so everybody, yeah. I'm letting you guys oh, okay. run with it. Have fun. I'm just gonna sit back and uh. <laughs> Mild. Safe. Uh, sure. Let's call it that. Can you? Are, are you confident you can take on anyone that tries to hurt everybody else? That I can attempt. I was to. going yeah. to say. Can you make sure there are more injuries on the enemies than the allies? Oh yes. The then I'll count that as a win. As should we all. All right, well, best get a run in while we do it. Let's go. <laughs> Jog uh, off into the forest. <laughs> Adrastos rolls his eyes. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> knees up, knees up, knees up, knees up, knees up. I'm As all knees. Trail... <laughs> As you follow the trail to begin with, it's fairly easy, but soon it turns into rock and gravel and such as you're passing through uh, a low area in the mountains here. Not as grassy, not as muddy, but you can still roughly make out the trail. And you seem to be headed straight towards the bay. Straight towards the water, the little inlet. That leads up to the harbor at Melitus. Well, I suppose at least he's going the right direction, if not a roundabout way. Sort of. Um, I'll pull out a small scroll of map that I have. He needs to be here. But we're over here. I think he's he's adding at least three or four days to his time. Mm. Well, if we're quick, we can probably catch up with him. He wasn't terribly fast moving. No, and well, like you said, it'll be good for the games. They're doing a marathon this year, so <clears throat> here we go. Right, well, <laughs> <laughs> keep up, human. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> lion over here, bounding <laughs> over. <laughs> so I'm trying to set it up so that uh, you guys can see the map. Unfortunately, I don't have it set up, so the map's going to come up in the battleground mm. on your. Mm. No worries. Pick something on the uh, stream side if it will behave. Mm -hmm. There we go. So where you where you are roughly is in this area. Right under the L. So 
Okay. Your your Minotaur is going straight to L. That's where it's headed. Mm. Oh. And you trek for a while, and you know he he doesn't move. So he doesn't run. He just walks. So you know while you're behind <laughs> him about half a day that it's it's not like you're losing ground on him. So if you're moving quickly, you'll slowly gain, and eventually you can smell the water coming, you can smell the bay, you know you're getting close. And as you top a last rise on, on the dunes that surround the area and come over the top, you see him standing there. And he's got the strap open, the, the gird that open that he covers over the map with, and he's looking down and he's looking ahead. And he's looking back and forth to the sides. Obviously, struggling to figure out what to do. Yep. Aha! <clears throat> Hail. Um, comrade! And he turns and immediately covers it over and eyes it up and, and like he's, you know, crouches like he's defending, like you're going to attack him and he's trying to protect that area. No, 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 it's it's us, remember? And I'll point to my arm where I wrote where I wrote my name on his arm, I will point to on my arm. And he looks and he, he looks back and then he looks and he points at Ariana and kind of I don't think I wrote on him. So uh oh um may, may I? And I'll kind of step forward a little bit. Um I'll pull a piece of like charcoal or chalk or something out of my out of a pouch <laughs> and just sort of do a little A. Since you're doing this in charcoal on his arm that's got other markings and things on it. Um Let's see. Let's do a, a dexterity on this to see how well you're able to mark this without. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, dex is. Oh no! Never mind. She's bad at dex. Oh no! <laughs> real, real strong. Not very dexterous. Uh, where do my d20s go? There we go. Honestly, so. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, Boise. That's not good at all. Uh, that, I have an inspiration. Can I? <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Feel free. I'm not, I know some people have home brews about inspiration. So I, if you're you're okay with me using it after I roll. It's, if you have it, you can use it for whatever you want. That's what it's. Okay, for. cool. <laughs> Seeing as I got it for my name of him, I feel this is appropriate <laughs> to use. <laughs> there we go. That's a 14. All right. So you, you mark it in there and it's it's like twice the size of anything written in pen. But he and he, exactly. he kind of looks at it and he kind of brushes on it and brushes some off and you and he and he touches you on the shoulder and then touches it and, and then he points to the other name on his arm, Tikaros. Um, I will point back the way we came. She she couldn't come, just us. We wanted to make sure you got where you were going. And he opens it up and he, he points on the map to his destination. And looking at where it is, it's actually down a ways, but the shortest route would be to go straight and cut down. And so he's looking and, and he, he kind of points to this area that's, you know, you, you could drew out the bay, you drew a mark for it, but there are other lines as well that show roads and paths and circles for cities. There's nothing to distinguish what the lines mean. And so he's looking at it and trying to figure out how does he walk across this? <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a boo down. Is there Are there like little fishing villages or anything like that? Or like little houses on the water? There are things along. You're in between a major city and then one of its minor cities. And yeah. so there are little villages around. But he's standing in an area that is fairly desolate. Almost mm. as though he selected a place where there wouldn't be people around. 
<laughs> Makes sense. Valid. Um, well, the quickest way, unless you know how to walk on water, sir, uh, uh, would be to find a boat. Should we perhaps check one of these smaller towns? And at the word boat, he actually backs up a little bit. Uh, can you can you swim? And you just paint me. Oh, the pen. Hmm. Yeah. Are you more comfortable with a raft? <laughs> and he just he kind of looks and he, he he looks up the waterway and back down almost as though he's looking for something and he just shakes his head hmm. Hmm. well perhaps we should just follow the edge of the bay take a little bit longer but if our friend if we can't get our friend in a boat yes i i think he does not care for that implication uh, let's uh, care for some company i'll i'll say we walk with you and he nods his head and begins to walk into the water oh well um we <laughs> both grab a shoulder <laughs> yeah. uh you're around <laughs> and he stops and he he takes out the pen and the ink the quill and the ink and yeah. he makes a little symbol on the on the map like water like little waves and <laughs> he draws a very rough sketch it, it you have to study it for a moment to realize he's drawn a boat and then he puts an x through it <laughs> do we um because i know some of them kind of figured out what he was. Do we know what he is? Our characters? Uh, you haven't had anyone tell you, so you couldn't figure it Not out in before. Character, you no. didn't know. So okay. in character, no, you did. You haven't figured. What this is? Out yet. What is? Cause, yeah, I, I think I. I think Krista vaguely remembers what this thing is. Um, but it is there like a role we can make for that to know to to even know that those things are things. You had done um, some history checks right. and things. If you would like to, you know, if you're if you're really concerted on this, maybe as you're walking along or you've spent some time thinking on it, uh, I'll give you an Arcana check. But I will let you know Ooh. since you didn't get it the first time, uh, the DC is going to be fairly high. So that's no okay. Try it out. That is my. Well, I rolled a four, a fourteen, and a four today. So. It's the kind of day it is. <laughs> you yeah, got a natural man. 19. Ooh. Awesome. Which is unfortunately a 19. <laughs> I thought you were going to say an 18. <laughs> I was really excited. So, Adrastus, no, no as, you are, as you are working on this and you look at the boat, you notice that he drew a symbol on there and it's kind of a, it's kind of a slang symbol. It's a, it's a derogatory way of referring to the ferryman. You, um, you have an issue with the crossing threat. And he looks at you and then up and he reaches up and he lifts his mask a little ways so that you can see under it. And underneath, you see hollow eye sockets. Skin that is just there and so thin, it's like paper against his face, and his mouth just hangs open. You, you, you know, Ariana, I think maybe he could have walked across. Hmm. You know, you, I think you're right. Um, it's probably good Vara doesn't see this. I think this would upset her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no offense, friend, but I feel like it would upset a lot of people. Um. Well, 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, well, and, and I mean, I, I hesitate to say I'm exactly comfortable with it, but he's clearly done some, he's either done some service for one of the gods or his skill and canny has allowed him to circumvent them. So who are we to judge him? Judging is for the gods, not us. And they do it quite often. Let's move along. He puts his mask back down and he taps on Tikaros's name on his arm and then covers it. If we make our way uh, to our destination, uh, you will see Tikaros again. And he opens up the map and points to where he's headed again. That unmarked dot. Yes, you we will figured out where it was. We will accompany you for a bit longer until we're sure that you're on the correct path, and then we will make our way on our own. So you travel for several hours, and eventually you you are traveling the coastal route, which is actually a shorter route into Melitus than the road that your cohorts are taking. So you end up at at the harbor. And as you approach the harbor, he stops and he begins to look around for a way. He, he just looks very unhappy. He does not want to go forward into the harbor area. I don't think he wants to be around people. And judging what I know about the people below the mountains, they are not quite as receptive to what we've just seen. This is a fair point. Uh, what direction does he need to go to get to his dot from here? He needs to go around the loop of the bay. So if you are right here, I'll, hold on. I'm pinging and it's <laughs> not pinging, which means I'm on the wrong map. Um, he needs to kind of go around this curve here to get on the other side and then start heading back south. Gotcha. Okay. So he either uh, well, has you... to go, you'd either have to go inland and around Melitus, which puts you through all the major roads, or you're going to have to find a way to get him across the bay. <sighs> well, we know that he doesn't particularly require breath, or at least I would assume not. But he would risk losing all of his markings. If only we had some kind of suit I was going to, that could, could go get into wet. town and wrap him in cloth. Uh, uh, water skins, perhaps. We would need a lot of them. He's rather large. He is. Also, there's far be it for me to spare a joke at the expense of a minotaur, but there's something about covering a creature that is bovine in leather that just. <laughs> Bothers me a bit. Uh, this is a fair point. Um, you can you can make fabric out of like fish, can't you? It's a thing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Depending well, on the fish. Perhaps. Come on, you, you could probably make history. you could probably make good leather out of vara and use it as a waterproofing. You know? <laughs> well, there we go. I mean, Problem arguably, solved. you can make good leather out of any skin. Uh, yeah, that's right. But. Uh, <laughs> Let's let's keep it to the non-sentient creatures. Um <laughs> the lesser sentient creatures, perhaps. Uh yeah, well, all right. Um friend, uh if you would like to go across the water, you cutting across is probably the quickest way. And if you don't want to use a boat, going that direction might work for you. However, you will lose your markings. Have you experienced this before? Did you overcome it? And he, he he looks as though he's pondering for a moment, and then... Yeah. I'm going to um, hold out my hand and, like, right on my arm and hold out my hand for his stylus. He'll hand it to you. Okay, so I'm going to just write a symbol on the back of my hand, and then I'm going to dip it in the water and hold it up and show him the symbol kind of, the like, ink linking off. And he looks at it, looks down at the map, 
and then looks at his arm and covers it. And mm. and then I will take a piece of uh, cloth that I just like. I'll take a bit of like the skirt that I'm wearing and not rip it off, but just hold it up and then wrap it around my hand and just give him like the ah eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to look, he looks for a moment, and then he turns abruptly south, back the way you came, and starts walking. Uh, um, what do you think, Ariana? <sighs> this feels like a problem, and I want to overcome it. Uh, oh, all right. Let's get some more information. <laughs> and like, okay. kind of start following. Up. But, but hey, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where, where are you going? He just keeps walking. I mean, he's very determined wherever he's going. <laughs> you know, I think he might know this path better than us. He seems he he seems intelligent about avoiding byways. And even though we have led him in the wrong direction, he actually seems to know better than we do. How to navigate. Walking behind him as we're having this conversation, just kind of following him along. <laughs> mm. And he walks for a ways, and every once in a while, he kind of looks up along the shoreline a little ways. And after a few minutes, he heads up the shoreline and grabs something out of a large bit of brambles and drags it out. And it is this battered to crap old boat that has obviously been sitting there for a long time. And he... he you have a boat. He points at it. He points at it. That, that would be a good way across if you're... I thought we were no boat. And he points up towards the, way, the city and goes... Oh, no cities. Boats are okay, but no people. No, he, he points at the boat and he goes, <laughs> and he no drags boats. it towards the water. No boats, no cities. Okay, are, is there anything in the boat? Like, a... are there sails or anything? It's, or is it's like, an, a, just like a rowboat? It's, it's an old beat-up boat, no oars, and he sets it in the water, and it seems to float okay. And you, he, he, he then turns and storms up the hill. And I mean, storms, you can hear the stomp as he stomps his way up there. It sounds like Agrios charging in battle. You know, he just thump, <laughs> thump, thump. Okay, and are he there gets trees? Up in there. Are there trees around? There are some trees, yes. Okay, so I will run ahead so I can get in front of him and I'll... And then I'll take a leaf off of a tree and I'll put it on top of the mark on my hand. And he'll lean over, and he it's like he wants to blow on it, and then no air. So he takes his ah. hand and goes, and it just blows off. So he turns and continues and heads up. You hear him digging around for a few minutes, and he comes back with a log, about four foot long, big around log, and he's swinging it like a bat, and he puts it on his shoulder. And he walks over, gets on the edge of the boat, and sits down in it. Let's 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 be his chauffeurs. Yes, both to say uh, ferryman, and then goes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I needed to practice the swim as well, I suppose. So I'll very like with like making eye contact with the whole time. Like, are you okay with this? Just push the boat a little further into the water. All right. <laughs> it seems it seems to be retaining its buoyancy and not taking on water. Is he okay with it, though? He looks very unhappy, and he it, you can see he's stressing as he's, you know, fondling the end of this bat, and I mean, he's continually looking over his shoulder. Yeah. You, you know what? I, I understand, but, you know, sometimes we just need to have a stress squeeze, and you're very strong, <laughs> so I'm glad you've decided to use a log instead of me, and then I'm going to start, like, just, like, paddling behind him, pushing the boat out. 
Yeah, I'll hop so, in the okay. front of the boat. <laughs> okay, sure, that's fine. <laughs> she's she's He's hopping got... at the very very front and is paddling with an yeah. arm to like steer a little bit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you I'm just gonna like those outboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> just pull his tail. <laughs> And as you're pushing you along and going the, once, Ariana. <laughs> the whole time that you're going, he is he is looking across and looking up and down the water, obviously terrified, mm-hmm. but and ready to just fight anything that comes along. And I'm not I'm, gonna make you I'm do it. I don't know stuff if this is this, gonna so. do anything. <laughs> But I'm going to, as as we sort of get out into the water, um, she's going to dry her hands off and um, reach out to sort of touch the top of his chest. And if she does, if he doesn't stop her, she will do so, but she'll do it slowly. Um, when you when you do, he, he kind of starts for a moment and then looks and he sees it's you and he just relaxes down a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to cast bravery on him Aww. for heroism, but it... It, he's he he's immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit, hit points, but it's the it's the feeling of feeling brave is what I want to give. You're him. so brave. You're doing so good. <laughs> You're doing so good. Yeah, Ariana's the best hype so man. He sits up. He sits up a little taller, and he instead of sitting there, you know, twisting the bat, he takes it and he kind of thumps it in his hand. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And very good. <laughs> she'll start paddling again <laughs> and which which way are you going i mean you could just skirt melitus and go up on the land over there or are you going to try and make it all the way across this very large bay because that'll take a little while probably just get a i i assume you can disagree with me um but probably just get around because once he's out of the town yeah i think we're just skirting melitus yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. And then so we can you come get back through. to Melitus the other way. As you pass the harbor and you're a ways out so that you're not directly visible, there aren't a lot of other boats around. And as you look off to the left and see, that's because all these boats are, are lined up in the harbors because there's some kind of a celebration going on. And you can you can hear the party noises as they echo down into the bay. You make your way past that and find a good place on the shore that's quiet and in. And as you land the boat, he reaches back and he grabs one of your arms, Adrastos, and he stands up and picks you up with him. (laughs) And walks and sets you down on the shore. I see why Talabeus didn't care for that. Um, <laughs> I have to admit that is an experience I haven't had in well since before my main came in. That was interesting. He takes, I'll hop out and he, pull the boat ashore. He takes the uh, the club and looks at it, and suddenly it's like he doesn't understand why it's in his hand, and he kind of throws it away and. Kind of does this like, yeah. It was it was good. It was good to help you through. You don't need it anymore, though. Absolutely, get rid of that. And he's going to touch you and touch the your name on his arm. He's going to t- pause for a moment, going back and forth between the two remaining names. But he's going to point to Adrastos and the name Adrastos, and then he's going to point to that other name and look around. She's I'll, not here, but yeah, I'm I'll sure point she's, to Melitus. you're in her. Th- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're in her thoughts. He opens the map and kind of looks on it and looks up and circles around and. Can we point where we are on the map? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. He, he he looks at that, figures out where he needs to go, closes it up, and starts walking. Um, at, as he walks away, I'll do the nice, just warrior chest beat to him, and then I think we're we're good here, Ariana. I agree. There are Appreciate some. Uh, 
Yeah, I was gonna say, there's games in Bellatus this soon, right? Aren't we on the schedule for that? Are we gonna be I, late? Probably. We're late to most things, though. You know we are, it's but okay. at least we make an entrance. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> I'll beat you there, and she'll he's... push him and run. All I will sudden, immediately he's... fall into the water. <laughs> all, all, all of a sudden, he stops, and the one of you that's not in the water, he places his hand on Ariana's shoulder, and it, he, he, he grips. It's a little stronger than you would expect. And he turns, and he looks at you. I'm going to smell and listen for a second. Give me a perception check, please. Oh. You smell wet cat. Could I also make a perception check? Oh, nice. Well done. With this prompting and and with Adrastos, you know, being out of the water and not splashing anymore, you hear a noise in the distance. And you pick up a smell that it's, you haven't smelled anything this like this since since the temple fell in Neolanton, you smell blood and death and in the distance you hear the sound of crows Ad Adrastos, what is the closest town that way it's, it's not coming from Melitus, right? It's coming the other direction? No, it's coming the other direction. Okay. So would that be Oxus? No, you're headed up around the bend. The closest okay. would be Krimnos around the bend. So where you're at, That's you're, on the four winds you're around the Four Winds Plateau, but kind of on the uh, mountainy side of that. Would I know what the nearest city is? Would it be Krimnos? You, you would know that... There's not really any city between here and there of any any note. There may be there, villages. There isn't anything here. This could be it's, a small village or it could be travelers on the road. And without letting go of your shoulder, he is going to start walking forward, not realizing he is <laughs> grabbing you along, Ariana. She'll she'll have almost she'd been like about to take a step anyway to start heading that direction. Um Yeah, address this well hurry up a little bit and just shake off his mane yeah she's you gonna walk. from like underneath his shoulder from underneath the minotaur's shoulder she's gonna like un take off her shield and set it up and pull her sword and just full full like l'oreal commercial just <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> you walk for about maybe she's born with hour. it maybe it's divine energy <laughs> you walk for about half an hour the odor gets stronger the noises get louder and eventually, you turn a bend, and you see that the DM's reusing a map, but hey, that happens. <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> mm. So many bodies. And you come around, and what you see in front of you is the remains of a battlefield strewn with bodies. Well, he stops for a moment here. and then immediately proceeds to one of the collections of corpses on the ground and bends over and looks at them. Go over and investigate. I'm going to have my head on a swivel. <laughs> you find mixed in with humans, centaurs, minotaurs, several bodies around. Many of the bodies, however, you notice have empty eye sockets and their empty mouths hang agape and the skin on their face seems taut, like something's been taken out of it very similar to the face you saw underneath his mask. Adrastos, I... I know, I see it too. I'm going like to take a... Yeah, I'm going to take a quick look to see if there's any symbols on them, any... 
names sewn into clothing. Various, various things you find. There are some symbols. There are various things on them. You notice on several of the bodies around here, there are my, marks like if they had a mask, it was ripped off of them. Uh, the bodies have, from all appearances, been thoroughly searched. Anything of mm. value has been taken. That goes for these empty faces and the centaurs and minotaurs who have been fighting as well, who normal centaur minotaur faces, mm. but they lay about. He doesn't bother with those, though. He is looking at only the ones with a face like his. Yeah. Hmm. Were they friends of yours? I'll point to like my chest and then point to one of them. Don't know. And he, and he puts his hand on their face. And then all of a sudden his head just looks up. And he stands up and takes off at a run towards this mountainous area over here. Uh, follow? I, I suppose. Run. <laughs> Sword, shield. Yep. As you get closer, he runs fast. It's going to take you a little bit to catch up with him. Yeah. But when you do, as he's round, slowing to round the corner, you see ahead of you a stack of bodies surrounded by several of those goblins that look very similar to the clothing and style of the ones you had run into when you first found him. And they are surrounding one of the bodies that is wearing a golden mask. And they appear to be trying to pry it off the body. Okay. Um, I'm going to immediately use my disarming roar. <laughs> and just yell out, LEAVE IT! <laughs> this causes them to stop and start suddenly. But your friend charges in. And by the oh. time you get your statement out, the la you hear about five feet in front of you the thud of the body of the goblin he picked up threw over his head and it has flown through the air and crumpled in front of you. Seems we have a fight on our hands. Uh, uh, and I'm going to run forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm... I'm going to let the Minotaur uh, take out, like, I'm not getting in his way, but <laughs> if one of them tries to run, I'm going to catch it. In the words of Jane Cobb, ooh, a tussle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I think the thing we should probably do is uh, roll initiative. Woo! There are only four of these creatures left, but they are armed and uh, presumably dangerous. This dice is liking me. That's a nat 20. Uh, 11 awesome. for Adrastus. All right. Just 20 for me. Look at us with our zero and next our, game. <laughs> our, friend, the Minotaur, our friend the Minotaur got 10. And uh, the way I usually handle these is I normally put the, the bad guys in the middle. But since you rolled an 11, I'm going to put them a little lower in the scope here. I'm going to put them down at a 9. So with that, Ariana, I believe you are up first. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run in and just give me a, give, give them a good ring upside the head, by which I mean I'm gonna stab them. All right. Which one? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mark one of them in color. Let me do that. Yeah, I was, so I was gonna say, is that goblin here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I forgot okay. to mark the color on that one. There we go. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go for that yeah. one because he's farther away and might run away on us. Okay. So I'm going to run to that guy. Don't move. There we go. Uh, cool. Yeah, let me attack this boy. 
Uh, that's a 16 plus numbers or 20, 30, 20. That is a definite hit. presume. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Being that he is a mere goblin. Right, and that'll be ooh, a six plus two, eight damage. Oh, wow. All right. So definitely cause some wounds there. I mean, very, you hear things crack. Yep. You in, in, a, in a not very good way for that creature's uh, soul there. Yes, good. Uh, right. That is Anything all else? I can do. No, all okay. of my spell slots are spent. <laughs> all right. Adrastos. All right. Um, Ariana's got that one handled. I'll go help our friend over here. Uh, I'm going to give Greeny a sword up about the face. Yeah. Okay. No, I won't. That's a six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. That's that's sadly going to be a miss. Okay. That's okay. I'm I'm in awe of this cool, super strong dude. So it's five. And I'll pass the dice. He's, he's got it. That was a natural right. one. If you want to do anything with that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to in okay. this case. Because <laughs> we, we've got so many other people waiting right now. I feel a little guilty. Yeah, I was about to say. I, I do want to. <laughs> Clint, the player is feeling bad. So, so <laughs> yes, exactly. What what the Mementor is going to do is move in and kind of straddle the body of the one with the mask on, which means he's he's crunching and stepping on the other bodies to to get a footing that covers. And you know, you can tell he's he just doesn't even realize it. He's just stomping in and there and puts his arms up to fight. The one that's closest to him is going to be the one in red. And unfortunately, he, he, had red. Given, he had given up <laughs> he had given up his club. Oh, damn. So he's going to take a swing at it and he's going to just flail at it and barely miss. The goblin kind of moves back a little bit. But that of course brings us into the goblin's turn. Uh he is going to jab forward with his uh spear and stab the minotaur and he's going to get him in the chest and oh eh, not too no. much damage but he definitely uh hit him pretty good the other the one in orange is going to uh look for a moment and then charge forward towards adrastos to get involved in that fray does a 17 hit it does not all right so he is going to swing at you, no luck. And the poor archer, there's not much he can do at the moment. So he just swings at you with his bow <laughs> and tries to gouge you with that. that and 20. I know that doesn't hit. I know that's, no, 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 afraid not. That's not going to hit either. So we will come back up to Ariana. Uh, I'm going to stab again. All right. Stab him. Stabby, stab, stab. Stab him. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a 21. That is a hit. <laughs> Joke's on you. He casts shield. You don't hit him this round. Uh, it's four, so six damage. All right. And that one is down. Ooh. Uh, she'll turn to uh, step in um, and flank that uh, red one. All right, and lock down so that it can't run away. If if the, if they're not all dead, she intends to question one. Okay, address us. Okay, um, I'd like to have a word with the goblin in green. Uh, this time I'm going to use a fainting attack. So spend one of my superiority die, get advantage on the attack because I'm grumpy. <laughs> Fifteen. Awesome. That is okay. a hit. So that is two D eight plus five. Uh, so that will be fourteen damage. And he is down. Okay. Poor little archer bow breaks and just to the ground. All right. <laughs> Blood everywhere. Yeah, that kind of thing. Take that. All right. 
and then I'll just move to the other side of the orange one. Here. All right. With you uh, coming up behind the one in red, Ariana, its attention is momentarily on you, and it turns its weapon and points it towards you, at which point Mimontor is going to reach forward and grab for it. Yes. And that is a nat 20. Oh, <laughs> just right on top of the head. And he he just grabs, grabs his head and squeezes. And you see this goblin as the shock on his face and his eyes go wide. And you hear a cracking noise. And his arms go limp. And he's just thrown out of the way. Well done. <laughs> Where was this energy when we were saving you? <laughs> this it's here now, you, and that's what matters. This leaves you with one orange goblin that looks around at you and seeing that he is not in very good uh, shape here all by himself, begins to swing wildly towards Adrastos with his hat with his uh yeah, his axe. That is an 18. That will hit. All right. That is my armor class. <laughs> that is Jesus. going to be a, uh, a whopping three slashing damage from this thing. Okay. As he swings wildly at you and then suddenly looks past you and just stops and stares. Does he seem like frozen? He definitely something caught his attention after that blade caught, you know, caught hold of Adrastos. It's like axe in him, and then he's like looking at something off. So it would be behind both of you. Uh, is, is are we still in initiative? Oh yes. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. Ariana's going to keep her shield up, but sort of between her and the goblin, but turn and look the direction he's looking. And you see two figures approaching in golden masks. They're wearing long, dark colored robes tied about the waist. One of them is carrying a great axe and the other is carrying a sword. And they are coming your direction. I'm going to look to the Minotaur. See what his reaction he, is. He is busy looking and his eyes are on this goblin. And like this. Okay, she's going to bump him and point <laughs> with her sword. He, he immediately goes to punch and then realizes it's you and looks up and sees them approaching. And he's just going to backhand the other goblin, the orange one, basically so that it do. falls into a Drastos. <laughs> Perfect. A Drastos is just going to pummel strike it on the top of the head. Just bonk! <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> good. So with that, we will, we will say that he is rendered unconscious just to uh, make it nice and cool. easy here. <laughs> uh, yeah, the I'm going to turn, turn shields and keep sword not pointed at them, but like at the ready. Okay. And they walk up and they stop about five feet away from you. And the one with the sword puts the sword away. I will sheath my sword behind my shield. <laughs> Same. And the one with the axe is kind of still balancing it. He rests it on his shoulder. I will relax my posture a little, still keeping the shield kind of covering in the style that we would have practiced, covering Ariana's flank a little bit. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and friend, are these friends of yours? And he 
he goes down the, the, the three names on his arm. And the one with the sword walks forward. And unless you try to block him, even if you're in the way, he's just going to walk right between the two of you. I will move to, to allow him in because yeah. he doesn't seem to be moving aggressively. So, Yeah. He's going to walk up and place his hand on the shoulder. You know, he's a little shorter. Place his hand on the shoulder <laughs> of your Minotaur friend. He, from what you can tell, he appears to be your standard human form with a big gold mask. And he's going to touch him on the arm. And then he's going to grab his hand and point and kind of pull. I think we're no longer needed here, Ayana. Let's make our way to Melitus. I'll just Absolutely. give the Minotaur friend a couple pats on the back. Yeah. And then make our way back. Make it our way back to Melitus. Yeah. All right. We'll nod at him and watch him walk off. If you watch as they walk away, they go for a ways and he just walks. But at one point, he does look back. He looks down at his that. arm. And then turns I'll give him the chest thing again. Walking. Mm -hmm. When he looks back. Mm -hmm. All right. And then off to Melitus we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat you there. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Throws a stick back, trips you. Right? The, the two of you, as you do your marathon run back to uh, <laughs> Melitus, you know, you come in, you uh, arrive a little tired, a little bedraggled on the harbor side of things. Um, and you are met at the gate by partiers. There are guards, but the guards seem to be just kind of standing back. And unless some kind of something breaks out or there seems to be a problem, they're just letting people do what they do. They're Coachella security. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. <laughs> uh, uh, are there people, like, is there, are, are there, like, drink stands are there food vendor there there everybody around seems to have a drink or two in their hands there are places where drinks and food appear to be just everywhere you're kind of on the outskirts but you can see as you look inwards yeah. towards the courts of this enormous city uh there's there's lots of partying going on if if there's anyone with like double like double fist in it um ariana's gonna walk up and like slap them on the back and laugh and cheer with them and give them a bit of a shake and grab one of the drinks and just walk away with it Ad adrastos is not necessarily in a merry mood right now things are weird for him and also somebody cut him and so he's grumpy so he's going to go to one of the guards and he's going to say we were traveling with a party led by um someone i believe in your employ by the name of ptolemaeus there would have been a triton is that what vara is okay i'm sorry there's there's several <laughs> aquan critters and i wanted to make sure i got that right so forgive me i uh, would have been traveling with a aquan triton a satyr. you you, you <laughs> racist <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's also there's also a number of feline critters. <laughs> I have I have been unspoken for so far in this session, and I have been talked about being turned into leather. <laughs> I have been called an awkward creature. <laughs> like, I just don't there know, are like, a lot of Leonin creatures. It's okay. Vara's, I'm sorry. Vara's got like spidey senses going off. Where well, she's I, like, I'm going now, guys. I See can you tell later. someone's talking fun. shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. They're, they would have been traveling with a triton, a satyr, and a centaur, and a large cart. We need to catch up with them. And, and the, assuming you've approached one of the guards, because that would be one of the uh, obvious That is what I did. I approached the guard, yes. Yeah. He, he looks around, and he, and he kind of points at the crowd. And, I mean, there's a mix of groups that match what you just said about three or four different groups that it could be in there. And he's, and he's like... Um, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder and say, you've been very helpful. And then I'm going to walk <laughs> into the city. As, as he does, uh, Ariana's kind of looping around and kind of walking past the guard and be like, uh, the barracks are... 
someplace that you're not allowed to be unless you're part of the royal guard. Okay. If I wanted to speak to someone who would know something about guards, I don't need the barracks. I need like your next above that I could get answers from. Can I speak to your manager? Yeah. (laughs) But in a nice way. (laughs) Exactly. Hang on. Carry on. (laughs) Well, uh, with the celebrations going on, it's going to be. Come with me. I'm going to whistle over to Adrastos and nod ahead. Mm, don't like that. And I'll walk past. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a, like a, like a, a attention whistle, not like a. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's going, if, when you two join, he is going to take both of you and begin meandering a, a path through the city. And he'll look back every once in a while to make sure you're still with him and go mm-hmm. and, he eventually he's going to look back and go, thanks, I was getting tired of standing there all day. Hey, happy to help. She'll have a good set excuse. a cup down on some windowsill and manage to grab another one from another party. Or... <laughs> uh, you said you came with a group that was in a wagon. Um, a large wagon drawn by two horses. We were accompanying something important. And he, he's just going to dead stop. I'm sorry to inform you, I think your friends are dead. The wagon was attacked south of Melitus and burned. There were no survivors. When? Um, a day ago. day and a half at most. That couldn't have been them. We've seen them since then. Well... Actually, figure all the traveling and stuff you've done. I was going to say, how long have you been? Is that magic time? Okay. Okay. He couldn't handle it for five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) I do not say, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, uh, Was there a report on who was there? We had a very particular group of friends. Um, I know there were, they found the remains of, of horses. Mm-hmm. I believe it was horses, a horse. Maybe. How many? Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't know all the details. Um, I think the best place for you, you, so you came from Neolantan. Yes. I think the best place to take you is, is to the council. Of course. So it's now he's a little bit more somber, kind of a little more straight and soldierly as he is escorting you. She'll and have handed her drink the... off to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the latest house, <laughs> all of you are waking up for the day And getting ready to go meet at the council chambers for the meeting this morning. Prime comes in and wakes all of you. Um, says that breakfast is being prepared. Um, that Elitus is already waiting for you. If you would please uh, come join us. Are we ready to go? Good morning, Prime. Don't forget our date later. Definitely not, ma'am. <laughs> mm. I don't think I slept enough for everything I went through. You, you look a little rough. I'm sure that... Uh, that run-in with the uh, priest of the temple. Oh, that is a nasty bruise. Oh, that's fine. Um, I don't look like a mouse or or worse, a human, do I? Uh, No, you... Well, I mean, partly, yes. I mean, oh, somewhat. Really? I always thought humans looked like half centaur. 
Mm. Well, wouldn't they be, well, they'd be two halves of human then. It's an interesting theory. Mm. I'm two halves of centaur. Mm. Oh, come, breakfast is ready. And he will lead the three of you into a seating area. And then oh. <laughs> lay out lay out plates for all of you. And he lays down a fourth plate and then shakes his head, picks it up, and goes and puts it away. After a few minutes, uh, Alidas is going to enter the room. And he sits down and is immediately served breakfast. And uh, you all don't look like you slept very well. It's, it's been a rough couple of days, but uh, I, I think we swept well enough. Um, well enough. That we, we appreciate the lodgings and, and, and food, despite that. Do, do you know um, where? Sh- yeah, we've uh. got half of our group missing still. Have, have you seen? I know. I, I know. Um, Ptolemaeus was with us at one point. Prime, where is Ptolemaeus? And you'll hear the footsteps and all the activity that was going on in the kitchen just stops. And he appears around the corner. Um, he was looking through some papers last evening and he found something, went to bed, and when I went to check this morning, he was not there. Yeah, well, he's from the area, so maybe he just, uh, or has at least been here before, so maybe he just got a head start. Have, have you heard anything about um, the other two of our group? We, we are expecting um, Ariana and Adrastos. They were helping someone, but I, I assume they'd be here by now. Letus is going to reply. Well, Prime will be here at the house if they show up. Um, Of course, they won't know who to ask for. Although if they say they were with the cart, oh my, if they say they were with the cart, they may have been confused for the other cart. I will, I'll, Prime, send a runner to the guards at the gates that if, uh, can you describe them for me? And their names? Yes. Um, Yes, it's Ariana. Um, Ariana is is a um, uh, she's she's a beautiful woman, um, quite tall, athletic, uh, and Adrastos is a um, large, uh, fierce, Leonin, Artemis. Very good. Uh, if if those two should arrive, um, have them sent. Well, I have them have them meet us at the council chambers. I suppose. Or no, no, Prime, have them come here. You bring them to the council chambers. That will be better than them showing up and guided. And brief them on, on what is happening. In very short terms, tell them what has gone on. They do not need a full details. And he nods his head, of course. So you all get to finish breakfast. And when you're done with breakfast, Everyone gets together and makes their way back to the council chambers, which you've been to before. And as you approach the steps, you see a guard in front of Ariana and Adrastos. Ariana and Adrastos, you see three of your friends, but one of them is missing, and they are with someone you do not recognize. Did Ptolemaeus change a little? Adrastos, thinking that his recent comrades were dead and having an entire existential crisis, is just going to run over and just, like, pick up Vara and Tikaros both in a massive hug and be like, I thought you were dead! Oh. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> quite, please quite, keep, quite a lot. Please keep um, it down. Oh, sorry, Acrios, and I'll just put them down and just give him a hand on the shoulder. Mm. Well done, friend. <laughs> You're one short. Yes, where is Ptolemaeus? Uh, um, and... He went, went away in the middle of the night. Um, we, have, we have some new friends. Um, 
uh, and I guess Prime uh, field. Is Prime with us? No? no, Prime is back is at the back? house. Yes. Um, Prime, lo lovely fellow, is that the word? Um, uh, mentioned that he had been reading papers and uh, slipped out in the middle of the night. So I, I guess he just has business to attend to. We're hoping to see him later. Um, mm. But we're, we're, suppose if we're making trades, Ptolemaeus is worth two. There you go. Um, have you have you eaten? Have you rested? I mean, we have, we have just sweating. <laughs> yeah, very very little. Um, food sounds wonderful. Uh, grief has a I'm way sorry. of stifling I'm... the hunger, but excitement has a way of reigniting it. So, I'm sure. I'm sorry. There is no time for that. We are due in the council chambers. I am glad that you are here. Since you are here, and since our friend Ptolemaeus has decided not to show, um, I would appreciate if you would join us. Oh, I apologize. I am one of the twelve. My name is Alidas Labros, and he will stick his hand out to shake hands. Yeah. He's the, one. the rest are assholes. Class <laughs> yeah. pan. <laughs> Adrastos of the noble Sonclaw of Arescos. Pleasure to meet you. And he will point to this young, unassuming woman that has been tracking along behind all of you so quietly that you, you really haven't paid attention to her. Um, and this is, this is my aid. Oh. Shall we go in, please? What is your aid today? It doesn't matter. It matters to Lovely me. Lovely to meet you. It doesn't That's matter. That's an interesting name. <laughs> 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 Three do different have, responses. I loved it. <laughs> do I have to go in? I have a hangover straight from the bowels of Tizeros. <laughs> oh, I'm I sure you can make you... it through one measly meeting, Agrios. Oh, uh, you should Sounds have like seen they the have last one. Us. I, 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 we do not want a hangry angry Agrios around these people. I, I have to be honest. Things will not go well. <laughs> <sighs> You know, I, I have to agree with you, Vara. Maybe, maybe he... Can we get him some water or something? Yes, do we, do we all need to go in? Could it, I mean, perhaps... Um, yes. Uh, just a we few all us. need to go in. The council requested right. that you... Have you forgotten all of our conversation last evening? You act oh, like yes. it was weeks ago. It feels like... <laughs> Certainly feels like it was. <laughs> perhaps you could, uh, perhaps you could run us through it again. <laughs> perhaps for those of us that weren't here, <laughs> <laughs> they had the council had questions. I've discussed these things with you. You are here in case they have more questions, and I assume you have decided to accept the proposal to become my researchers. So that you will be under my protection and that you can continue to help with the issues and find out what is going on and what is behind and he'll point at agrios's our sickly friend here's announcements um a button button in that um i do have things to do here in town i've made no such agreement i'm bound to these people as honor binds me but i cannot be spoken for oh we're, we're not going to be like servants per se it's more so i mean when we talked to the council they really just didn't respect much of our thoughts we talked about everything that happened and, and that we believed that it wasn't the gods or someone impersonating the gods and they kind of uh, brushed us off and and so what our what our new found uh, friend here is saying that he will he will allow us and, and help us to continue following what we believe is the truth rather than standing aside while this council assumes that everything is fine. So we'll be able to still go about our, our own, but um, part of that can be trying to get to the bottom of what we've seen destroy um, a large swath of uh, people and, and areas and, and things like that. 
we may have something to add on to that as well. Yes. Um, but it may be something that the council would be interested to hear. Well, and he, uh, he's going to raise his hand and go. He's going to look over at his aide and make a hand gesture. And you're going to see as she mutters some words and does something. And then everything around you goes quiet. And he steps yeah. forward. Well, this is disconcerting. I would prefer you not say anything new that we haven't already discussed in the council chambers. Is this something that can wait or is it urgent? It could probably wait, don't you think, Ariana? Perhaps something we share with our new friend here and just our new friend. Yes. Perhaps. If we do not keep things from the council, so I am not asking you not to speak your mind if you need to, but if it is something that is not currently relative and of the most urgent nature, I would ask you to save it until we can discuss it and fill you in on the information that we have shared last evening. There is a concern Bara of a threat to the Irowan games. Well, now you're going my to attention. mention this. <laughs> We're not <laughs> going to mention this inside. Not. We are simply here today to finalize any questions about what happened in the Atlantan and your journey here. And then I would like to have you working for me because then I can send you to research these things and you will be protected from certain other groups that may have motives that are not as pure as finding the answers. Our party... Sorry, go ahead, Ariana. Uh, I suppose this doesn't count as our trip here, as we passed Melitus before it happened, so... No reason to bring it up. It's not relevant at the moment. I, I think with this group of people, we tell them only what is necessary and what is asked. And though I have only known her for a short time, Vara speaks very intelligently and with much more tact than I am able to. She seems to trust you and does not seem to trust the council. So following her advice, I will follow yours. Well, I will remind you, I am the council and that we can be trusted, but anyone who can be trusted can be trusted to do what is in their best interest. That is why there are 12 of us, so that we can decide what is best for Melitus and the surrounding areas. So I maintain no, my position. No word of the games. No word of the games. What games? And, and I give him a smile this. and walk inside. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana as soon puts as you, away her application form. <laughs> as soon as you walk away, Adrastos, and you get about four feet from the group, you hear this slight pop noise, and then all of a yeah. sudden, the sounds of the city just barrel in at you, and you hear yeah. all these voices and partying going on. And cat like the ears fold back, and <laughs> just, just turns around. <laughs> 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 and Elitus will make a hand signal, and his aide will do a couple of gestures, and the sound slowly comes back in for the rest of you. Please. And he will lead the way in. And I think we're going to take a break here. <laughs> so you are making your way into the council chambers uh, when suddenly the doors to the chambers, which you're familiar with, well, some of you are, you've been here before, open and several people come streaming out. These pictures should match. I have no <laughs> idea what that was. <laughs> Apparently these pictures should match. Oh Apparently these pictures should match. <laughs> I don't know if that was mine or somebody else's. Uh, I have no idea. That was interesting. I have no Very. idea what's running in the background or what is possessed. So we shall find out. <laughs> anyway, uh, Alitas kind of stops and Gets this very indignant, and now the bulldog's yelling in the background. Hope it's not too uh -huh. bad. Uh, Alitas stops and kind of gets this very unhappy look on his face as the group passes by, and you realize there are three or four people in each group, and they're all dressed in different garb, 
from the different temples. So you see almost every temple represented. Conspicuously absent is Mogus. And Heliod. The rub in the wrong. And they walk by. All of them kind of acknowledge Elitus as they go by. And then he proceeds forward, almost storms forward into it. The attendants open the doors as he approaches. He turns around at the last minute and points at you and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and he walks in. What is going on here? Do you follow him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Gosh, this as is you going make to be very quiet for a second because I need to take a quick phone call. So um, Ariano can speak for address this. Make sure the okay. photos match. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yeah. So he, he walks in, asks what's going on. And the person, the others know who she is. You can kind of tell from where she's sitting. She seems to be kind of in charge of the council. Stands up and it's okay, Elitus. No, no foul was meant. We, we know that your friends had a late evening last night. And so we handled some business. Uh, no decisions were made. Nothing's been changed. We were just gathering information and talking to the temples about the activities planned for the day. Fine. And he walks over and takes his seat. And some, atten some of the attendees or attendants, pardon me, take you guys and move you off to the side a little bit. You're, you're still in the court. You're still, you know, in center around them, but you're not the main focus in the room. I noticed uh, Mogus and Heliod were not there. And for Sophia, the woman at the head raises her hand. Just a moment. They're on their way. He leans back and he looks over at you guys and he just. Was there a representative of Eros that we saw move, leave? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll clock him so I recognize their faces. <laughs> All right. And a few minutes go by. <clears throat> Lots of people just standing, kind of looking. The council members all kind of off in their own thing. Elitus, uh, you can almost see the steam rising from him as, as he is irritated by all this. And after a few minutes, the doors open <clears throat> and a very large minotaur walks in. And he has a battle axe over his shoulder. It's very highly decorated. And he walks in and he stamps up and he goes, We're here. What do you want? And he kind of looks over and he sees Agrios in the corner. And you, you kind of, for a moment, it's almost a hint of recognition, but then he just turns like you're not even there. Uh, I anticipate Andrastos would not be happy about this sight, so Ariana's just going to kind of put a hand on his shoulder to kind of keep him calm. All right. Um, Sarah Sophia, um, we were waiting for Heliod. He's not coming. He has better things to do this morning. I'm here in his stead. Now, why were we called separately from everyone else? Um, well, simply, we have a request. We are going to request that you close the sacrificial altar for the rest of the festivities. Takes the axe from his shoulder and sets it down on the ground and puts his hand on top of it. No. It is for very good reason. You realize what happened. There are many people who are quite worried about Mogus, and some people blame for what happened out there. 
you heard what happened at the temple. I could not give a damn about what happened in Neolanton. If the people of Melitus are in fear of Mogus, that is how it should be. It is time for the games. The sacrifice will be made because that is how it is always done to honor Mogus and the challenge of the games and to seed on to victory those who are worthy. Well, I'm, I'm very disappointed by this and I was hoping you would be cooperative. But the council has spoken, and with this, you see Alitas kind of sit back. And if you are not willing to voluntarily close the sacrificial altar, then the guard will. They will be stationed in a line outside, and no one will be allowed to enter or leave. Um, may, I, may I speak? Is that allowed? Is, is this a situation in which I could talk on, or, or are we just <laughs> watching this unfold? Um, just wanted to give my two cents. <laughs> and with this, the Minotaur just kind of turns his head and looks over in your direction and all of the council kind of and uh dracos just kind of sits back and does this and chuckles a little bit and elitus you can see he's he's just kind of hiding his face a little bit behind his hands all who are here in the presence of the council are free to speak on their turn um, as we were all contemplating this latest statement, I, I think now would be a good time. What do you have to offer, Miss Vara? Miss Vara, Vara. Tideborn. Vara Tideborn. Um, uh, well, I just, I don't know. I, I have a lot of opinions. I've spent a lot of time by myself, I, I'd like to think. Um, uh, and I've done a lot of reading. So um, I know we have brought up and potentially disagreed upon who or what exactly is going on, whether it's a god or someone posing as a god or what have you, but... And as you there, say this, you see Alitas go... There is, <laughs> there is a very real possibility that what has happened was not Mogus's doing. But if you do not make a sacrifice to him, then that would likely anger him. Which means if it is his doing, it will make things worse. And if it isn't his doing, he will then be angry and potentially do his own thing separate of who the actual culprit is. I, I think a sacrifice either way is important. just for peacekeeping purposes. Are you a follower of Mogus? No. And you hear from the Minotaur, pity. Well, I, mean, I mean, we're cousins. I follow Atreus. And there's some murmuring back and forth <laughs> around the council chambers. Mm. Truly a pity. Aria just you standing heard. in the back with her big Eroas on her chest. Just... And Adras is just growling <laughs> quietly. <laughs> the, she speaks sense. There must be a sacrifice. I, I just I just think it's practical to, to make sure that if if people are angry, if gods are angry, we don't make it worse. If it is if it is Mogus and he wants destruction. Whether we make a sacrifice or not, it will continue to happen. And if it isn't Mogus, 
it'll it'll just upset him and then potentially we'll have two situations on our hand i, I don't know it, it it just seems pretty logical to me i i'm not part of the council i don't i don't i'm not i don't hail from melitus ultimately it, it's not my place i guess but i don't know hi follower of Melitus here uh what she said <laughs> oh seconded <laughs> yay thank you <laughs> Um, at this point, Adrasos yeah. would step forward too and say, as many of you know, I'm sure, the Leonin of Arescos do not follow the gods in the same way as those below the mountains. We view them the way we would view children. Very powerful, very angry children, but children nonetheless. And when a child is angry, you do not take away their toys. So while I do not necessarily follow the gods, I think it is best that if they are, in fact, angry, to placate them and not further their rage. What Vara and Agrio speak is true. Hey, Gore. Do you have any comment on this? I agree with his premise that the sacrifice must go on. For the rest, I would likely kill him in the arena. You are welcome to test your theory at your earliest convenience, friend. We are uh, Ariana's still looking gonna... for a sacrifice. <laughs> Ariana's gonna lean down to Tigros and be like, I I think I missed something. Did we determine did Agrios hear something? Did did Mogus do that? Are we assuming Mogus is behind this? Yeah, that's what they think. Got it. Well, Mogus said he's not though. But they don't believe me. I believe oh. you. Thank you. But Does, with does this, he believe you and point off at the Minotaur? <laughs> I know you all are whispering among yourselves, but yeah. as you do this, <laughs> all of the count all of the council turns to look and listen. Because <laughs> the room that you're in is designed for whoever speaks to be heard. <laughs> if so I while may, it doesn't reverb and echo, they're definitely <laughs> listening to everything being said. <laughs> Address us will step forward and say, if I may speak again, I would first like to apologize to the council for my words. I spoke brashly and rudely, and I did not mean to step upon your beliefs. It is far from me to take away from the honor of those who follow any god in any way they wish. But now knowing what you know about me, let me speak for my companion here. He is an acolyte of Mogus, and he had a vision. Though I know him to speak, Strangely, from time to time, I do believe that the vision came from Mogus. It was not in his voice, and it was not words I would have heard him speak. Mogus tasked him, and by extension, the rest of his clan, and I will uh, indicate that we are that, to hunt down the perpetrators of this for Mogus. Now, Mogus is a warlike god, and I doubt very much he would not take credit for a slaughter of this magnitude. So... Take it from one like myself, who has no stake in the desires of gods. What Agrio speaks is the truth, and to anger, anger Mogus further would be a grave misstep. Uh, I'll, Ariana will take a little bit of a step forward and go, and as his possibly direct counterpart, I stand by him. The weakling warrior is correct. The sacrifices must be held. What's the out of character thing? <laughs> Hold me back, Ariana. Hold me back. <laughs> Let him nose. go. I want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Tempers, please. She'll look around and Elitus. 
I know you haven't had an opportunity to present your findings from the last evening, but what is this about a statement from Mogus through... And she points at Agrius. What is your name? I am called Agrios. Through Agrios there. And he is going to give the dirtiest look to your group as he looks over. Because this is definitely one of the things you discussed that you would not bring up uh -huh. in the council. Uh -huh. <laughs> Goal. We didn't I know. I no, this, is not, this is not what we discussed. Exactly. We are. <laughs> we know you don't know. We're talking about something else. <laughs> Well, we had many discussions, and it, it appears that our fine young warrior here is somewhat of an oracle of Mogus, and he receives messages. And apparently, he was told by Mog Agrios, I do not wish to misquote Mogus or put words in your mouth. Would you please? State what Mogus said through you. It is my will that you find whoever tried to pin this on the gods, said Mogus. And with that, the Minotaur is going to fully turn and move his axe and, you know, bound it down on the ground. Is that all he said? There was a second prophecy. The 31 deaths will account for sins of the 13. That is all that Mogus said through you. Nothing about revenge, violence, blood. Nothing about making them pay. Are you sure this was Mogus speaking through you? Who else would it be? I don't know. This sounds like something, a Phoenix joke, maybe. Uh, are you telling me? Are I you prone to delusions of people speaking through you? Delusions? Have you been tested at the temple? Oracle. I have been through trials in the badlands of Phoberos. That is not what I asked. Have you been tested at the temple as an oracle? No. How dare you speak! Attempt to speak in the name of Mogus. You know, moments ago we were on your side. Um, <laughs> maybe let's go back to uh, Port Pleasant. Actually, you know what? I think um, let's go ahead and get on with the main purpose of us appearing to the council. I'll kind of look at Ellie just because I've been watching him just slowly <laughs> shrivel and I'm realizing I talked way too much. So I just... <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyways, our wagon ride. I would love to talk about that. <laughs> Excuse me. We were discussing the closing of the altar. Not some damned wagon. And I think we all agreed that it shouldn't be closed. Right? You are not the council. Tregor? Vara? Quiet, yes. please. Okay. <laughs> At this point, Adrastos matter... will have kind of walked up behind Agrios and is just kind of standing at his shoulder in like a come fight. I was him. about to say, two of I was us. about to say the same thing. Like, <laughs> like I'm like I'm like putting... posted up with Agrios. Like I'm, I'm like a, his back his background bouncer. <laughs> yeah, and Arya's kind of like stepping so that like she could easily step in between Vara and the Minotaur. Just in case. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna ask all of you to roll a perception check. Sure. Oh, no. And do 
Uh, that'll be a 21. That'll be a 12. Okay. okay. 16. Ten. Okay. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Thank you for bringing the average down. <laughs> uh, I'm missing one. Who am I missing here? I have 21, 12, 16, 7. 10. 10. Okay, I didn't hear the 10. Sorry about that. Okay. No worries. Actually, that average is high enough. Um, as you are doing this and you are, you know, squaring up like this, you notice that Alatus' aide and all of the people standing behind the council members kind of take a step to the side and begin moving their hands in different patterns. About to get magic. <laughs> you will remain calm here. There will be no fighting. And while I myself enjoy a good shall we say, excited dialogue. You will not argue and yell in the council chambers. For no. my part, I do not wish to fight either. I just wish to provide support to my pack mate. Wonderful. And I will put a hand on Agri's Be, qui Be quiet now, please. I'm speaking. It is my turn. The matter of whether Agrios is an oracle or not, is something for the temple and for the followers of Mogus that is outside of here. Whatever message was received, I am sure Alidus has taken it into account. And once we get his briefing, I'm sure we will understand more the context of these things. Yes, thank you, Sophia. The issue here is lots of information conflicting that has come in from Neolantan regarding the temple, regarding the deaths there, uh, regarding the tragedies that have occurred. One, one of the fine Olympians was killed trying to save others during this. But there are many reports of seeing the fingerprints of Heliod shining gold on the stones as the temple was crushed into the ground. And we all know this is not the first time for Heliod that he has been unhappy for whatever reasons with the Atlantans. And, and as we know, they, they, he originally sunk the island, which is why Neolantan exists. They built the greatest temple to please Heliod. We do not know what has angered him. We have heard nothing from the oracles. The oracle of Heliod was killed during this. Why would Heliod kill his own oracle? That doesn't make sense. There are questions to be answered here, and I am not questioning the actions of Heliod. Oh, by the way, the Sphinx is dead. I was about to ask. Uh, yes. Quiet. <laughs> die on our cart? Quiet. Please. If you cannot hold your tongues, I will have them held magically for you. Thank you. Elitus. Outside of our own gates, people saw the axe of Mogus fall upon the wagon with the oracle in the back and destroy it, killing everyone on board. The horses were slain. And if it had been Mogus, it would not have been done hidden outside of town. It would have waited till it was at the gates and he would have slain everyone. Tregor, be that as it may. There are festivities and people are concerned. I understand that you want the sacrifice to go on. It has been tradition here for over a hundred years. Can we make this compromise? You may hold the sacrifice 
May. So you will hold a sacrifice. But the procession through town. No. The procession through town will not happen. Seeing the banner of Mogus carried through town would be too much. I think it will dampen the mood. It will scare and frighten people, and it will not serve a purpose. But it is, it is the sacrifice that matters. Can you agree with that? I can comply, but I will not agree. That is good enough for now. Anything else? Council? And you see a bunch of no's. Thank you, Templar Treguar. You may leave. And he will turn and walk over to Agrios. And look him dead in the eye. You. You are the one from last night, aren't you? Yes. When the sacrifice is done, I will see you at the temple, and we will find out if you are worthy to be called an Oracle of Mogus. Very well. I look forward to it. May death greet you in battle. <clears throat> and he will turn and walk away, walk out. And he, when he gets to the doors, the attendants start to open the door and he smacks the door open with his arm <clears throat> and heads out. Well, um, now that the Enjoyment of the morning is over. Um, Alitus, your your group. Please join me, and he will wave to all of you. Come meet him in the center of the council chamber. Yes, Kabara will go ahead and walk forward. This group. made the journey from Neolantin to Melitus, assuming that they were carrying the actual body of the Oracle. And Dracos goes, yes, the fools. That was man, I kind of figured it out, but um, sure. Wait, okay. what? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Ariana says the exact same thing at exactly the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, will, he will lay a calming hand on both of your shoulders. And, and then turn back. They brought information that brings to light there may be going on here more than just the anger of the gods. And while we have things that need to be taken care of here today, and obviously caring for Neolantin and rebuilding and Hoping those who are wounded, the families of those deceased, must go on. I believe there is further information to be got. And I believe that they are, they are adequate to the task. I believe that they will do a good job and they can, they can go about without raising the suspicions of the guard. And therefore, I would ask the council that they be placed on the books as researchers for the council. I will pay for their expenses from my own pockets. There will be no bearing on the council. And you hear Draco's kind of, <clears throat> hmm. I simply request that they be free of any ties or any hampering 
from the actions of the council so that they may work freely. Well, where do you plan for them to perform these activities? Well, we have identified a few places. Um, there's a village in the southern edge of the peninsula that bears some interest, uh, may have something to do with going on here. We do not know. And uh, possibly um, at the games. And with this, you see as she straightens up, the games. Draco stands up. I must protest. I do not want anyone interfering with the games. We have just stopped one of the biggest threats to, to the entire procession of the games with, with that Templar of, of Mogus. We, if they go in the games, they cannot interfere or do anything that would halt or stop the flow of the games. Uh, Ariana's gonna yes. step forward. <laughs> um, Your name? Ariana of Akros. Pleasure. Um, I, and she'll kind of ad address her giant symbol of Eros. I would not dream of interfering with any form of competition. Um, my friend Adrastos and I were already planning on being in the games. If we will be moving about in that space anyway, if we are finding out information in the process, we are the perfect people to be doing that. Um, Dracos is going to, um, I have a concern with this, Parasophia. Um, I do not think it is appropriate for members of the research arm to participate in the games. Uh, if this is discovered, it may look as though Melitus is attempting to sway the games or in some way change the balance of victory. Uh, I don't want anyone to be blamed and accused of um, cheating. That is a good point. Um, how important is that you participate in the games? I think that if you do, we will have to decline this. Ariana's gonna stare at Adrastos. Yeah, Dr Adrastos is just like, he's, he's got like the really tight arms, just... And then through clenched teeth, he says, We will do what we must for the betterment of Melitus. I thought part of the point of us being a research team and more so under the leaders than the council was covertness and uh, I, I don't I mean the whole <laughs> as, as you're saying this it isn't elitist 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 kicks you kicks you in the toe with the heel of his foot <laughs> as you're talking <laughs> oh sorry uh, what I believe uh, our friend Vara is trying to say is that the anticipation would be that uh, they would not be acting as research when they were participating in the games. I think that is, is a line without a true distinction. If it is found out, if it is not, even everyone in this council chamber would be aware of this. That is 24 people, not including your friends and the attendees at, attendance at the doors. Uh, I do not think it would be wise uh, to have people participate in the games. Um, Persephia, this elite is speaking. Persephia, um, I have one request. Um, a dear friend of Adrastos was killed saving people in the temple. And I believe at a minimum he should be allowed to participate in her place in at least some events. And 
I will personally stake my name and reputation that he participates fairly. And there will be no, and he specifically looks at Agrius, there will be no cheating or other anything to sully the event. Do you agree with that, Augustus? <laughs> I will step forward and say I have no divine gifts, as is probably evident by the fact that I pay no homage to the gods and have no time for the study of the arcane arts. I will only fight with the strength of my arm and the training that I have acquired over my life. I will follow the rules of the games as you set them forth, and if you allow me to participate, in Nira's name. I will bring honor to that name and to the city of Miletus. And then I'll do the chess thing. Mm-hmm. Ariana will pat him on the back. Stand by his side. And you, Ariana, are you participating in the games? I will stand by as Adrastos' coach. Are any of the rest of you participating in the games? What what kind of events are there to participate in? <laughs> Again, you get kicked in the toe. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana looks slightly up at Agrios, like kind of excited that he might, and then if he doesn't, she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Look down at Tikaros. No, I'm just looking forward to seeing Adrastos. He's going to win. Well, now I have to. He (laughs) says with a smile. (laughs) But in the back of his head, he's looking at Agrius like, man, they hit you hard. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I have some things to think about. (laughs) Of course. I'm having kind of a fucking crisis up here, okay? No, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I, you, you do you, my friend. <laughs> I don't think you understand. We'll talk about it later. Sounds good. <laughs> Very good. hearing this com- YouTube banter behind you, his face turns a little red. Um, I believe that we have agreement. Would you have any argument with any of this, Dracos? I don't see how I can if Colonel Sophia agrees. Very well, then. You are now assigned under Council Member Alitas Lebros, and you are members of the research arm until released from that service. Adrastos. What is your full name, please? I am Adrastos of the Sunclaw Clan of Areskos. Adrastos of the Sunclaw. You are now a champion of Melitus, and that we wish you well in the games. I'll uh, just take my shield off of my back, bring it in front of me, and then do three knocks on it, just boom, 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 then put it back. Now we need to have our private council discussions. Elitus will turn to you all. Please head back to the house. Please go directly there. And I will see you shortly. I'll just nod to him and say, thank you for speaking for me. Turn and pew! (laughs) (laughs) Mara is going to try to wink at him and see if he reciprocates. (laughs) To see if we're allowed to go somewhere else. (laughs) And he does not. <laughs> okay. And Bar will go. Noted. <laughs> Just <leave. laughs> so uh you exit the council chambers, the doors are closed behind you, and suddenly all the discussion sounds from inside become extremely quiet. 
So as soon as we're all outside, I'm going to turn around. What in Erebus name happened? <laughs> I, I think it went quite well, personally. Sorry, Agrios. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Should we find somewhere quiet to talk? Yes, we were told to go directly to the house, and when I tried to imply that maybe we would go somewhere else, I did not get a response, so I do think we should go to the house. You know what? That's fine, but I would l definitely like to hear what transpired in our absence, because it sounds like a lot. I went dancing. That was fun. Oh, oh you well have done. to be prime. <laughs> Navarro will start walking towards the house. I got turned into a rat, but who cares? You, hold, hold on. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We're, we're not glazing over that. And he says as he walks. Oh, yes, we are. House. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> there are bigger matters. Listen, listen to me, Adrastos. He grabs Adrastos by the, the, the shirt or the armor and pulls him in. What if I'm not an, an oracle? What if I'm not an oracle of Mogus? I'm definitely an oracle. Agrios, you're definitely an oracle. I'm definitely an oracle. What if I'm not an oracle? Of Mogus, are you listening to me? Uh, y yes, I... You will be tested, and you will what succeed. Do do? What if I don't succeed? What if they kill me and make me the sacrifice for blasphemy? I'm gonna slap Agrios. You'll be fine! <laughs> you piece of shit, do that again! I'll kill you! I'll kill you right here! There we go, that's the Agrios I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you have at least walked outside of the council. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, we're outside. Mara has a quick pace, actually, because she's slowly but surely re like going through everything in her head, and she's like, "Oh, I spoke way too much. We need to, we need to get home. We need to get quickly, quickly. <laughs> oh no!" <laughs> yes. <laughs> Start jogging back. Yeah. Have a, have a nice little, so, like, you know, like, buff off with Agrios real quick as we walk back. <laughs> so the partying continues. Uh, again, there are drinks and everything. And as you approach the the area of Aletus's house, you know, the festivities kind of wane out because you're in the residential area of the council. So <clears throat> the partying's behind you. It kind of wanes a little bit. And you make your way back, and you are at the house. Ariana somehow has multiple sets of beads and random cups and like someone's. All right, now I just. As, <laughs> he just starts to talk, sees Ariana, just shakes his head, like, eh, Ariana being Ariana. What happened? <laughs> oh, the, the, or um, the Oracle was not the Oracle? Yes. So I had spoke with you about that. Um, yes. The Oracle, we, we were a decoy. There were two wagons one of which had the actual oracle and took the main route. And we had someone posing as the oracle. It was actually a, 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 quite a high level um, ma ma magician. Um, Amaturge. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it was a very incredible spell that he withheld for a long time. He, he did not seem happy about it. Um, so we had in tow just someone posing as as um, the Sphinx, but unfortunately, uh, our decoy worked the opposite way of intention. Where I believe we were meant to be the ones found and potentially slaughtered, but um, the true uh, oracle was the one who was killed. We we came upon them on the road. I don't think we know who did it yet. Um, if nothing else, that's more proof that this wasn't Mogus, because I doubt Mogus would pass up an opportunity to slaughter a follower of Eros. Sure. Well, and then if, were they, were they, was it dealt with the same way as Neolantin, Neolantis, or, or was it done by mortal hand? Um, we know it was burned, and there was quite a bit of, um, uh, yeah, I think it was. I think it was done differently. It didn't seem like a crushing or a divine intervention. It just seemed like. I mean, Tigaros got a bit more of a, a look into the scene, and and from what I understand, it was mostly just scorched. Is that is that correct? What? 
Yeah. Scorched. Yeah, it was burned. But I didn't see any details. Mm. I don't know. Oh, you know what else? That Drakius guy. We better watch him. He really hates Ptolemaeus. What's Who's, his deal? Whose so god is he? Or who 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 is his god? Mm. What do we know about this guy? I don't know. He's just know. really is mean. There, is there a god of dickheads? <laughs> I'm sure each follower of any given god would have a different answer to that question. Um, but no, it seems like him and Ptolemais have some kind of history. And I don't know, it seems like, well, the leader said it himself, right? I, he might be perhaps one of the people of the council who is seeking less to do what's best for Melitus and more to do what's best for himself. Um, but I agree, I, th I think we should watch him. But um, well, we came and we spoke before the council and, and gave our thoughts and opinions, much as I did this morning, and got about the same response as I did this morning, in which they kind of dismissed and were rude. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't. They are extremely rude. I, just, I, just, I have distaste oh, yes. for government, um, but uh, I prefer the seas. Um, but yes, yeah, so we, we talked to them, and then we met this elitist person who's kind of shown to be an ally and he has this uh, lovely lovely um servant named prime and, and quite a bit of records and library information that we can access and, and we spoke with him and uh, did our own um merriment last night uh in the city i mean we're about to have festivities so drinking and dancing and, um, and are, are, are we getting to... in trouble a little bit but um are we meant to sleuth it. this time? Uh, yes. As researchers, I believe so. <laughs> Interesting. Have they given us any specific directions? They obviously want us to be wary around the games, but... Yes, it, it seems that they just wants us to kind of um, be his eyes and ears, and I suppose potentially his muscle as well. Um, but... We, we don't have the specifics yet. It was all talked about pretty quickly and hushed. Um, and we had, we had quite a long night already. Um, I assume now that we've actually got permission to do what he hopes for us to do, we'll, we'll get more information and orders uh, from him later. Well, I for one could use a bath. Yes, I would like that. I'd like to get the smell of dead thing off. Of I believe we have some form of bathing at the, at the house that we're staying at, but if possible, whenever Elitis gets back, we can go check out the city baths. Either are wonderful. Oh, Chikoros, your friend says hi. My Who was looking friend? for you? The, the, the Minotaur in the gold mask. Oh. And I look, I look down at the little mark on my arm that I'm keeping very safe and not washing at oh, all. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm met, so glad oh, you went up to him. We met others like him. And many dead like him. Again. What? He is a... I'm going to kind of look to Ariana like a check and like, unique creature. But also n not as unique in that we found many of them, which should be concern. Yeah. How many? At least three. A At least Not three. Not dead. <laughs> and several corpses. Yes. And like, Adrastos looks visibly uncomfortable. He's just like, he does not know how to broach this subject. Yeah. He, he found his other friends, who I believe were taking him to his destination. However, he may have been being hunted in a similar way that, that we ran into more goblins that had killed more of his kind. It seems the mask he wears is of great worth. His kind are killed for their masks, apparently. Would seem so. 
unless it's something greater than that, it ties into this whole thing with Neolantin, and maybe that has part to do with it. And it, I, I've always been better at running my legs and my mouth than my mind. So I leave this to Yuvara and to Ptolemaeus when he hopefully returns. Vara perhaps may have... You may have the best insight on this. And I will kind of, like, take a breath and say, now I will remind you. He was kind. Keep that in mind as I tell you this information. And I will tell her what I saw under the mask. Interesting. Um, hold on. And I, I'm going to, I have a little notebook that I'm going to take out. Um, would I believe with this new information that he's an exception based on uh, notes and writing? No, it? but I, I, I think that it would ring a bell with you about, because as a follower of Athros, you sure. would be aware of the, the returned. <clears throat> yes. Okay. It, it is those, they have been escorted to, to the underworld and uh, made their way back surreptitiously. And I assume you know that. doesn't love that. He, he's done his job. So, oh, so it's just, not it's just exactly kind of thrilled, a... but yeah. Sure. It, 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 is, it is kind of a breaking of, of the truce. A gray area almost. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, um, I, are you guys staying outside having this conversation or are you moving into the house? We're, we're in the house at this point. In Probably house. like okay. just stepped yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you're in the main lobby what, area. Yeah. Considering what they saw, I don't think Adrastus would be comfortable saying this in public. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're in the main lobby area ahead of you. You can see uh, a study. The doors are open. And it's a room filled with tables that are stacked high with papers. So every, the rest of them have seen this, but this would be new to Adrastos and Ariana. Um, well, personally for me, um, uh, I don't... Uh, I know you said maybe I would be more adept or, or knowledgeable on the subject, but I, I know what he is. Oh, what is, what is he? Um, well, there's a couple of different terms for it, I believe, but um, I, I didn't put it together before, but he um, he is essentially uh, someone who has passed away and has found their way back. I usually quite often crawled or, or, or made great links and journeys to return. Um, but if I remember correctly, this process, um, I mean, he, he was, he was dead. Um, so that explains the lack of memory and, and different things like that. I assume he wanted to come back and had some kind of purpose in mind. But unfortunately, when you come back from the dead like that, you lose that, that knowledge and that memory of yourself. Victory so over death. As you're That's saying this, impressive. Prime, Prime sticks his head around the corner and goes, "Are you referring to the to the returned?" Yes. Oh, hello. This is Prime. He's the hello. Meet you, Prime. I am Prime, and you see in front of you a man made out of metal, and appears to be somewhat clockwork. Hello, Prime. I am Adrastos of the Sunclaw. A pleasure to meet you, Adrastos. Ariana, pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, Ariana. Uh, one moment, please. And he disappears, and you hear footsteps and some shuffling of papers, and he comes back a moment later with a, a bound, set of bound scrolls that he hands to Vara. The Returned. Uh, Table 15, that's the middle one by the wall. 
It's midway down the oh. stack. Hey, thank you. Was that him telling me where to return it or where to find more information on it? Um, like you have to ask him. He, he states oh. that and then goes back to work. So it's up to you'll have but to he ask gave, him. He gave me papers. Yes, he gave you papers. Oh. Um, is is that where I find more information, or I hand I put these back? That that's where you return them. Uh, there may ah. be more information because of the way it's categorized, but it's not necessarily related to the topic at hand. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yes, well, I mean we've got a bit of downtime. I could look into these people, and um, well, I, I know Agrios, you're a bit. Fearful about your current situation and, and oh no, I'm being hysterical. I know what I need to do. Okay. Um, well, I was just going to offer I, I, we've got quite a few resources here. I mean, Prime is a fantastic uh aid. He he knows access to information. So if, if I know reading helps me and research, so if, if that would help any of you, I'll I'll get right into this and then Vara will go dive it and just I really, need to, really focus on it. I need to get ready for the games. Perhaps we could set up some straw dummies for me. Oh, Prime, do we have any kind of washing here or would we need to go to the baths? Um, the, generally, people go to the baths for that or, well, some to the bay area. It just depends on... Uh, well, you're I, for one, would like to go to the baths. Um, Agrios, would you perhaps like to come calm? I think I just need to take a deep breath, go kill something, paint myself in its blood, and then beseech <laughs> Mogus to speak to me and identify himself as Mogus until it happens, and then the temple won't have to kill me for blasphemy. Would you like to do that clean first? All right. Wonderful. Tigros, would you like to join us? I think I'm going to hang out here and look for my researcher's outfit. And she's going to kind of bounce between Vara and the research and like looking through all the rooms to find some great outfits. <laughs> and Adrasus okay. is going to go. I asked, Adrasus is actually going to approach five. Is there a place that I could, I don't know, set up some sword dummies or something I could. Adrastos, you need to relax as well. If you work yourself too hard, you will be too tired. You have not rested in nearly two days. You are coming with us. Perhaps we'll find Telemaeus. I feel like the baths is a place he would be. Uh, uh, Adrastos is about to, like, um, protest and he goes, I... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Prime, uh, which way are the bathhouses? Um, which of the 15 bathhouses would you like to go to? The closest one. Oh. Well, there, there is a bathhouse for the council members and they're retained. Um, as much as I would love to tick those guys off. Perhaps we should avoid that one. What about gossip? You'd get gossip. Igoros makes a very good point. They may be relatively quiet anyway with the festivities going on and the council in session. Sorry, did, did you say they were paid? You had to pay for them? No, he said that they were set aside for council members and they're retained. So people who work ah. for them. So, well, we are retained. Are Let us retained? go retain. Adrastos retains lots of water. I did. I did. You know, I pushed a boat across the bay. It was very impressive. I was very pleased it was. with myself. He loses about Ooh. 15 pounds when his mane gets wet, though. <laughs> I look silly. Wait, he loses <laughs> weight. Normally, when something becomes damp, it gains the weight of the water. Is this a magical property? The visual property. It's, you know how you look more at something. Of like a, you, you see how fluffy I am. If I get in the water, I just kind of. It's very depressing. Oh. And why it's is like the, the saying when your eyes are bigger than your stomach? 
And why is the temple going to kill you, Agrius? Because I've been calling myself an oracle of Mogus, and I might be an oracle of someone else. You're not. You're an oracle of Mogus. He's just saying this on the way out. You're going to be fine. Of course I am. What if I'm not? You know, the, te the test to determine whether you're an oracle vary by the temple. And, and they can be as simple as uh, the Temple of Afara, I believe. You simply have to pour the water from a particular pitcher into a particular cup out of a selection of 20 cups. And if you are truly an oracle of Afara, then you will select the correct cup. So what if I just Mogus? try all of them, if I try all of them, yeah, what about Mogus? I was about to say, I don't um, think Mogus's will be as, as dainty as cup pouring. You have to kill 20 I, different goats with a cup? Honestly, um, I have never looked at, um, I know you wish to head to the baths. Can you wait a moment? And he will go into the other room and he heads to a particular table and he starts looking through and you can kind of make out the symbols of the gods because, you know, they stand out. So he goes to Afara, goes to Phoenix, he makes his way down to ah, and he brings a box. And he sets it down and he goes, this is odd. Normally it's just a report from whoever was there to study it. And he opens the box and then immediately closes it. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm afraid it is the head of the researcher who was sent to determine how the Oracle of Mogus is. So that tracks. Wow. I like it. Yes. If it's any consolation, the cut to the neck seemed quite clean. Oh, that nothing is some not conservation. Thank you. Could you pull information for um, Athreos's oracle process, if possible, and just add it to the stack? And Barbara's got this big <laughs> stack that she's got next to her. He'll go grab it and bring it back, and he'll say, "Since you are headed to the bath, um, I will place these in your chambers for you. They really should not be that closely acquainted with water." While you're there, Prime, if you don't mind, find me information on the Oracles of Erebus. Does anyone else have a god whose oracles they would like to have information I, on? Actually, now I'm thinking maybe I should just do a tour of all the temples and ask them to test me for oracleism. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be interesting. But I do believe that for um, the Temple of Heliod specifically, it requires 10 years as an acolyte. So it might take some time to get your answer. I hope it's not that one then. We'll leave that one till last. Anyway, I will collect the information and have it available for you in your chambers. Um, for Wait. now. Yes. One more question. I don't care about oracles, but do you have anything on Crufix? Anything well, interesting? <laughs> he looks over at this table that's kind of this huge mound and... Yes. That's okay, I'll start there. Thanks. <laughs> Would you like me to have it? In your chambers for reading, or no, 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 I'll stay here and just look through it. Oh, oh, you're not uh, joining the others in the bath. Okay, no, I'm looking for my researcher outfit, Prime. Crazy. <laughs> if I come across a good hat, I'll grab it for you, Tikaros. Tikaros, yeah. I've missed you so much. I know it's only been a day, but <laughs> I've missed you too. It feels like it's been weeks. Ooh. <laughs> Careful, I'm smelling. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Well, since Tikaros is going to <laughs> hang around and visit various places in the uh, the residence, we will handle that in a moment. For the rest of you, um, Prime will see that one of the other attendants around the house uh, takes you, who's actually working and not at the festivities, uh, takes you to the baths, which are not too far away, and you enter this 
large building, and as soon as the doors open, you are hit with this waft of steam. Yeah. And <laughs> smell of, of just this freshness smell that just exudes from the place. And you are welcomed inside the bath. And it is, it is a large steaming pool that is apparently fed from some type of a cistern outside. And the water comes in through this beautiful waterfall that goes down this marble wall, fills that, and then slowly overflow drains out the sides to who knows where. Well, this is just wonderful. Yes. Adrastos now realizing how sore all of his muscles are. Exactly. <laughs> Agrios immediately starts stripping without a care and just jumps into the. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Adrastos is the same. He's just water oh, goes. Yep. Water goes <laughs> everywhere. Exactly. And in horse. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I kind of imagine when he goes in, you just see all like just caked dirt and 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 blood just coming off of him. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, the way the water comes in and an overflow drains, there is a current to it. It slowly ah, it as this as this red and brown and black puddle forms around you <laughs> and slowly drifts. <laughs> Across uh, the pool. Like pig pen. Ariana <laughs> 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 will go up the screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Adrastos just looks like Simba coming out of the water, just mane over his face. <laughs> it kind of looks like Cousin It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, there's like attendants and stuff, right? Yes, there are a few. Uh, not as many as you would expect, but again, there are festivities going on. And with the council yeah. and chambers, it's probably minimally staffed. That's fair. Uh, I'm gonna like uh, someone, maybe maybe like a younger. If there's like someone there that's maybe a little younger, maybe a little more inexperienced, and maybe call him over. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hi, uh, I'm I'm Ariana. What's your name? Uh, my my name is is Riclius. Hi, Riclius. Um, hey, how long have you worked here? Um, well, I guess since I was 12, so six years. Wow, that's great. Uh, how often are the council members in here? Uh, well, it varies depending on who the council member is. Who comes in the most and who comes in the least? I'm not really sure that's information that I can. <laughs> She's just going to kind of like put her elbows up on the side of it and just like lean in. <laughs> Let's have a persuasion check, please. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a 17. Well, um, Para Sophia comes in a lot because she has a lot of meetings here. Um, I mean, bath meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shh. Is there Sorry. something unusual about that? Uh, not everywhere has such comfortable meeting spaces. Oh, all of all of the bathhouses in Melitus are are nicely appointed. This one, of course, is is to represent the Great Falls at the Great Temple. As the water I see, I see. flows purely down the mountain into the pool below and then empties into the sea. Ah, it's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And uh, who comes in the least? Oh. I, I rarely see Lord Dracos here unless he's meeting with Parasophia. Mm. So possibly him. His aide, however, what? comes in quite often. Oh, okay. What's uh what's that guy's deal? He seems really grumpy. I just met him today and he just seemed like I didn't even say anything and he was just mad. Most people like me. 
I, I can see why. I, I have no idea. Um, there, there has been a lot going on. I presume you've heard what, what happened in Neolantan. About Heliod destroying I, his own temple. Can I tell you a secret? I was there. You were there. Is yeah. it true that he stormed into the city himself and he, he, you saw his hand on the temple and, and he condemned everyone in, in the land? There was a hand. I am not a follower of Heliod myself. I cannot confirm or deny if it was him. He has a history of doing such things. However, have the, have the, have the council been talking about it a lot? Oh, they've had meetings. I, I really don't know. I mean, we're, mm. we're, we usually, we're not allowed to listen and we, we don't usually talk to the council members. And I assume well, it's not okay being to allowed to, to listen and not listening are very different things. Um, we take that quite seriously here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're just like, like we said. We wanted to make sure that the facts are straight. So sometimes it's good to know what's going on. But yeah, like I said, that Dracos guy, I didn't quite get him. Yeah. Well, hmm. everyone has, has their own way, but uh, you know, some some are very quiet, some are, are very out outgoing. It's 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 hard to say they and the council members, um, well, some of them, it depends on, on who they're dealing with at the time, I, I suppose. Mm. But, you know, just because they don't come to this bath doesn't mean they, they don't go to others. All of the True. baths around are, are, are themed, and there are, there are some that are much more lovely than this. Oh, I can't imagine. Oh, absolutely. The, the bathhouse... Uh, the bathhouse in the in the temple area, uh, there is one that has a, a an entrance and a spout for for each of the gods in a circle. I'm gonna kind of make an eye over at uh, Agrios. We uh, might have to find you a spout, Agrios. And, the spout and, of Mogus. And and the a master spout. painter has has painted all of the constellations across Ooh. the top of the building. And oh. at night, the moonlight comes in and sparkles across the water and causes the stars to sparkle across the sky. It, it's quite well, lovely. The, that I would like to see. Well, that maybe that's where Ptolemaeus is. Tikaros mm -hmm. needs to see that too. Oh, Avara would Advara. love that. And, and I'm told... They didn't even use magic to do it. It's just something to do with the way that everything is set up and the, the holes and the skylight and things. It's wow. it's quite beautiful. We will definitely need to go visit that. I believe we're going to the temple area later today. Perhaps we'll take a look. You don't have any drinks here, do you? Course, what would you like? Dracos's favorite. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to flip over to Tikaros, who is uh, back at the house uh, researching rooms. What particularly uh, are you dealing with? Okay. I'm going to ask Prime to help me if he will. So Prime, you know how you want to be a field researcher and one day you're going to learn polymorph and you're going to turn into a cart so you can be inconspicuous and all that cool stuff. We don't know that much magic yet, so we need researcher outfits for the field. So can you help me find some good stuff? I'm looking for like masks we can wear or eyeball stuff like stuff you can look through with your eyes or like jewelry that look like eyes so it's inconspicuous but we know what it is because we're like eyes of sleuthing what do you reckon 
Um, well, I'm I'm not aware of anything of that nature inside of here. It's it's very much research oriented, and anything that we have here, um, I believe that the councilman would be quite unhappy if it disappeared because it's all part of the archives. Ah, well, you know, maybe we could do the outfits another time. Maybe when we go see the temples, maybe I could just look on the streets for stuff. That mm. would be good. There are many stores open, and especially with the festivities, many many uh, salesmen and, and stores have come in from outside of the city and set up here in okay. temporary buildings. You probably find many great things, and we I'm have so many craftsmen as well. You're oh, so smart. and you as well. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay, let's research then. Can you find me? Okay, not just anything. I know I have to be specific. So I've okay. I think what we should look for is any sightings, any recorded sightings of Crufix or Clothis. Either of those will do. Got anything? Sightings of, of actual yeah. Crufix. Actual sightings, like any creatures that have seen those two gods mucking around in the world. Interesting. Okay. And so he will guide you and go with you to research. And we will have to come back to that because <laughs> uh, you just gave the DM a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so very good. You're, you, you go about and you're just going through all these stacks and slowly, you know, pulling references and finding things. And he'll look for a paper here and find something cross reference and put it back. And no, no, no. And go over to another section and you will continue doing this for quite some time i suppose back at the bath you guys have been there for let's say a couple of hours uh your drink was brought ariana it was water a little bit salty interesting not a thanks So what do you guys think we're uh, looking for? That's me. I'm just trying to relax for a little bit. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> well, same here, but you have to be multitasking, of course. Relaxed muscles should send more blood flow to the brain, make us think a little bit more. No. Not me. Pete make big, big kitty dumb. <laughs> and he just kind of sinks back into the water and just like closes his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair. No, but, are you feeling but seriously, I, I don't know what we should be looking for. I think the information we've gathered is good, and I do think we should look into the other bathhouses. If this is the how... <laughs> council bathhouse, everyone knows to come here. True. They wouldn't do their secret business here. And Agrios, how are you feeling? You're so weird. I haven't done this in a really <laughs> long time. I don't mean to be rude, but it was obvious. Why is that rude? Well, some <laughs> people don't like their uncleanliness pointed out. I'm not bothered by it. Just gonna have you to... certainly aren't everyone. Thanks. I'm going to take that as a compliment. It was meant as one. Uh, and Agrius probably looks like a new centaur at this point. Like, <laughs> just does he still have a braid? Um, his hair actually he has let his hair down to like wash it. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, he will tie it back up afterward, but yeah, it's. Uh, he, he no longer has his aggression. The braid, braid. The braid is gone for now. <laughs> yeah, the, the the battle plat is gone for the moment. Uh, Tikaros <laughs> will have to put it back. Yes, and I will. You hear a little voice in your head say, <laughs> <laughs> "Keep hearing so many of those." The worrying thing is, I don't know who they are. Anymore. Maybe you're an oracle of Tikaros. <laughs> 
There yeah. are worse things to be. <laughs> I guess I so. so. You have always been a follower of Mogus, and you have always been an oracle of one. Why I mean, would you not, doubt it now? Not always, always, but I don't know, because the high priest certainly didn't seem to think I was one. Oh, well, the high priest is a fool. Oh. And as Elitus says, anyone with any thought in their brain often thinks of themselves first, and if it's not in their best interest for you to be an oracle, they're going to deny you it. I imagine that a minotaur priest of Mogus would find a non-Minotaur oracle particularly vexing, which is why it makes me so much happier that you are one. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure you're right. That's it. It's only that I'm not a Minotaur. Of course. I think the gods work off of belief and our belief in them is reflected back at us. And you have been a strong believer and a strong stalwart follower of Mogus. As your detritus yes. portrays. Thank you. I, I don't think he's a god of detritus. No, but the blood within the detritus. Exactly. That's the one. Mm. And I know <sighs> very little about the gods, but I think if you did not at least have some of his favor, Half of the things that you are able to do, you would not be able to do. Yes, I'm I have definitely... Seen you... Sorry, go ahead. I have seen you bring down extraordinary divine magic to smite our enemies and send them running before you. You could not do this as a mortal centaur, powerful though you, I'm sure, would be. Your gifts are beyond simply the... Well, simply the marshal. I suppose. Yes, I'm certainly a cleric of Mogus, and I am without a doubt an oracle of someone. Probably Mogus. Definitely Mogus. Would without Mogus a doubt not, it's Mogus. Would Mogus not take severe offense to someone wandering around claiming to be an oracle if you weren't one? I think he probably would. Yes. And yet here you sit. And I'm and I'm not dead yet. That's a good point. See? My sword is not my only good point. <laughs> no, but it's but, my favorite. Okay, one. that's a that's a half Isn't inspiration. It? Okay. Yes, but the other half is, the other half the other half is by using the word detritus. So that's yes. an inspiration. <laughs> yes. Word. <laughs> Well, I will take that as a compliment, Agrios. <laughs> well, you should. Uh, well, enough of this, and Adrastos stands up. I do really need to train. Slight there just a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, finish her cup of salty water. Was Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if we got a description of Dracos. Is he human? Yes. Okay. Yes, is all is. the council? Uh no. Okay. Didn't if you would so. like if you I, would like that information, I can get it for you. It's okay. Uh, I'll I'll I'll, I'll watch back the episode. I only Pri got about halfway through. Primar I primarily the entire council is human. There are two exceptions, okay. however. So. Interesting. As the token human in this party, I'm interested. <laughs> You, you uh, that. You're leaving already. We, I feel like we just got here. And, and you look over and Vara is just nose deep in paper. She's kind of set herself up near the waterfall. And she also has taken out her, her like hair kind of bun thing. And she's got like long tentacles basically. And they're just like wiggling and like super happy and like rehydrated in the water. And she's kind of almost like in a salon chair, kind of leaning back, letting her hair and everything get wet, but she's still in a dress because she is is like a little modest and <laughs> um, and so she's she's still in her her um, 
her chitin, but she's she's kind of leaning her hair back like in a salon and, and reading him and a <laughs> very yeah reading reading the magazine and, and getting her hair done basically. Oh, when did you get here? I oh I've been here. I've just been uh reading <laughs> quite a bit. Well, no one needs to come with me. I'm perfectly capable of training on my own. I know you are my coach, but take the day off. Oh, I'm not good at that. I'm I know. Sure, I'm Do pretty it. sure Ariana was recommending you take a day off earlier, if I heard it correctly. Uh, no time for that. I'm a champion of Melitus now. And I have someone else's name writing on my back. I'm sure Mira would think you deserved a day off as well. <laughs> you didn't know Mira like I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think fighting fighting goblins was plenty of extra training that you weren't expecting. You can kind of, I think it'll balance out. We did get a good run on our way back None here. of you are going to let me out of here, are you? No. No. Fine. <laughs> back in the water. <laughs> we also Tomorrow technically we're... aren't supposed to have left the house. <laughs> I'll go ahead and note that. It's <laughs> true. We're very good at following instructions. No. Yeah. We're, very uh, we're very good at following instructions. The way this building is set up, it's actually lit from outside. There are various holes and windows around it that allow light to come in through, through quite an impressive array. Maybe some magic involved, but nothing that shows a, a direct a view of the sky. Uh, all of a sudden, it becomes very dark. It's just like a heavy cloud has passed over and the sun is blocked out, but not a cloud would still let some light through. And this is just black. Nope. Just gets out, shakes off, starts putting on his armor. Nope. We're dealing with this. I think uh, Ariana probably drops up, grabs her shield and sword. And just takes a, a look out the window. Deal, dealing with what? And she, and she kind of finally puts the papers down. And, oh, jeez. Um, to get a clear view of the outside, you will actually have to go to the front door. There are no windows that face out. Perfect. Well, once so, I have a bit of modesty cloth on, I will also grab my weapons and go outside. All right. Agrius is going to grab his spear and just run naked to the uh, window. <laughs> <laughs> to the front doors. Mariana and Agrius just running naked through the streets to find this thing. I, guess I mean, Adrastos is in his underwear. I think Var is the only one who's dressed. Yeah, yeah. Agrius, I, I'm thinking about it. Agrius being naked probably isn't even. Yeah. yeah, he's just not wearing an a shirt. Issue. I mean, that's I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's just how it does he like. wear like a horse? Yeah, like, people see horse. people see horses naked all the time. It's like ooh, some scandalized. Yeah, I, I think I think, uh, I think but you have like a little like a cover over your back, right? Like a little horse blanket. Sometimes, Normal. yeah. <laughs> oh no, he's without his blanket. Scandal. <laughs> Scandal. <laughs> I can see his mane. <laughs> anyway, as you as you open the doors, the air fills with the sound, the cacophony of thousands of crows and the fluttering of wings and their cry as they fly over Miletus. And as far as you can see, the sky is full of crows. I I'm not a fan of that. I'm just gonna Go out and live and say it. Does there seem to be an origin point that they're all flying from? Actually, it's, uh, you know what? Give me a perception check. Yeah. I'm going to take uh, out my telescope. Tikaros, as you were doing this research and everything going on. Is it um, perception? Yeah. <clears throat> you, you hear this noise as well. And uh, Prime kind of pops up and goes, that's odd. Sounds like birds. Does sound like birds. Let's go have a look. Vara, what did you get? I got a twenty-three. I take out. I like whip out my telescope, <clears throat> and it's this nice fancy telescope. <laughs> I love with it a, with a um, a symbol of Athiris on it. And I'm like, as you pan the sky, uh, you can see, you know, 
360 as you turn around, they are not coming from the bay. So they're not coming over the water, but from the dry land sides, they seem to be converging from all directions. And you're pretty good at reckoning where you are in a city. Um, they appear to be headed towards the council. Hmm. In fact, you can kind of make out where they make like a funnel as they are coming into land and they must be just filling the area around there. And you begin to hear terrified screams of the partiers as the sounds of the festivity go from music and party and laughter to fear. Bar it's like, I'm going to get some training after all. Yeah. We need to go to the council immediately. And, she, and she'll put the um, telescope away and just start running. Who wouldn't want to be late to the crow's banquet? Wow, look at you. <laughs> what a line. <laughs> I intend to take away their meal. Let us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not all of you were armored or armed. So I need to know nope. who's going with what. Uh, I have sword and shield, but okay. no armor. My okay. armor only takes away one point of AC anyway, so... <laughs> All right. Adrasto, she said loincloth and sword, I believe. And she have your shield? Okay. Yeah. All right. Agrios? See, if I leave my chainmail behind, I lose six points of AC, but yes. I, don't really have, I don't really have time to put that on. And I did say I was naked. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just spear and shield. Let's go. Okay. Let's do this, bud. <laughs> don't worry, Agrios. I lost six points of AC, too. <laughs> uh, Vara. Vara has nothing and never has anything, so no changes. <laughs> um, a question: Since our like in our travels of how far we have gone to get the Minotaur to his, the Mementor to his folks, and on our way back, have we had any kind of rest? I would say you would have rested on that journey. Yes, okay, you would cool. have had opportunity. Do okay, I still so have the damage well, from the goblin or? Mm, I, I'm going to let you be healed from it. And uh, okay. Agrios, <laughs> you've had a... I know, yeah, you, you used hit dice, had... so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, his, I did. His... I, oh. I used them all. We'll take care of you in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and if I've had if I've had a rest, well, I also... Me, right. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll, I'll I do this. Also... I'll do this to be fair to Agrios. And because you were with uh, someone who... You've discovered he didn't sleep. He would stop understanding that you needed to sleep. So you got short rests in. I will say you didn't get a long rest in. Okay. Okay. You got a couple of short rests in there. That that still restores my superiority dice and it gives me some health back. So okay. All good. Laura would have gotten a long not rest. Not great in, for me. I assume. Yeah, if you those who were in and staying at the no, no, a short rest. You guys were up until late, late, late in the morning. Oh, so right. no, it, it was, was all rest. short rest okay. for all of you. So yep. And then the, the only one, the HP only one who got, got a good point. night's rest was Ptolemaeus. Possibly. Right. You don't right. know He'll because save he us. Wait. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, so I, basically, so I, I, all my spells are still spent, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Okay. Cool. The temp HP. Um, if if Agrios is still looking rough, as we run over there, can I do a quick lay on hands? If you can catch him. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. I well, I'll before he runs away from me, I'll I'll hit him. <laughs> um, I'll give you. You're you're pretty bad off, right? In how how uh, Agrios? How did your uh, short rest do? Pretty badly, yeah. I, I'm at 15 hit points out of 26. So if I throw you 10? If you throw me 10, I'll be almost full. Sick. Okay, we'll do that. Still be all out of... Uh, I'll still be missing a lot of spell slots, but better than nothing. Okay, that leaves me with one. <laughs> I appreciate it. No worries. One is enough to bring somebody up. As you go running uh, down, you have to run past uh, Councilmember Alitas Lavros's home, 
And as you pass, Tikaros and Prime are making their way out of the door. So Tikaros, you see all these crows flying over. And you what see your this? friends running half naked through the streets. <laughs> carrying weapons. Mostly naked. Mostly naked. Yeah, mostly naked, yeah. <laughs> Gee, they still look good, she thinks. You, you didn't realize that Agrios was a pure white centaur. Yeah. <laughs> Not just true. Joking. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they're running past. I'm checking to see if you wanted to do anything to gross before. Right, right. Um, I'll say to Prime, look after yourself. Don't come out here. This looks bad. And I'll race after the troop, but I want to try and go stealthy. I want to try and like take cover behind anything I can see, like not try not to be right out in the open. Okay. That will slow you down, of course. Yeah. I'll try and just, yeah, that's okay. okay. All right. So uh, give me a stealth roll. Okay. Stealth. Ooh, that's good. 17 plus five, 22. That is excellent. There are plenty of trees and, and bushes and places you can hide, as you can see on the map. So lots of places to kind of sneak and slip in. Um, where are you all running to? Council chamber, I thought. Okay, just making sure that's where you're headed. So, All right. As you approach the council chamber, you see that these crows, they aren't attacking people. But they are landing everywhere. And there are more flying in. It is still dark in the city. Almost, a, almost as if night had fallen. It is so dark in the city. There are so many crows flying over. Yes, Ariana. Is there any god specifically associated with crows? Give me an arcana check. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because I think I know the answer to this, can I also check that? Sure. <laughs> Could I roll it, but with religion instead? Yeah, can all of us do it? <laughs> uh, why not? Six. I mean, does religion? No Religion would make sense. Yeah, religion would but make I, sense. It would uh, work. I got it. A religion as a religion roll, I got nine. It, it, that's better than my choice of Arcana, so everybody can do religion. I'm, I just made a horrible <laughs> it's choice. It's the same so. for both of me, and I'm sixteen on that. Yeah, mine is the same. So I got I got a twenty. All right. I saw a Jasta's got a one. A sure did. That's the second one of the day. Uh, that's why I just didn't say anything. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> Clearly, these are the followers of Kometra. <laughs> <laughs> They're the followers of Kaka. Kaka. Oh, God. I'll speak of Kaka. Gosh. I am His just wrath done. is great. Had so many one-liners. I feel like I feel like everyone else got a script, and I'm like, I don't, I didn't get one. <laughs> uh, Adrastos, do you actually make that call about no. them being from Kermetra? <laughs> no, because <laughs> you know I didn't see this, so I'm just making I know. sure. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, actually, as this is going on, there there is some confusion. You hear lots of names being yelled out, but those of you who've got such high scores, you think about, wait a minute, there's the myth of the Colossus of Akros. There's the legend of the Colossus and, and its fight and its battle, and it summoned many crows, a storm of crows. And the Colossus of Akros was created by Perforus. And it was in a fight, you said? Yes, this is... Dang, Perforos. I think I was... I'm from Akros, so I might... You would, familiar with you that. would that's why I understood that's why I've heard of this before you've had some familiarity with that yeah mm -hmm. oh there you go interesting okay so interesting. after weaving and running your way through so many people are ducking under tables and hiding everybody 
screaming about crows and crows and crows and murder because it's a murder of crows when you have this many mm-hmm. anyway. But yeah, you go charging. I had to say that somewhere. You come charging in uh, up to the council, and you see that they have alighted all around the council building. They are just all over it, and they're all beckoning loudly. It's it's almost deafening how loud it is. And the council members have come outside, and you can see that their aides are standing behind them, and it's actually visible the shield that they have placed over them like a giant umbrella. Everyone stay indoors so you don't get COVID. Agrios, Agrios, you deserve the bird for that one. So <laughs> I feel like I should be taking psychic damage. Sorry. <laughs> I think not, we all not should. Adrastos, you. You should be taking. Yes. <laughs> no. No. Me. I did. Yes. The player. Yes. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll run up, avoiding. I'm not going to step on any of them, but run up to the council members. As you approach the council members, one of the aides puts their hand out, and you feel like you hit a wall. But. I. So who are we blaming for this one? Latest looks over and goes, I don't know. Did, um, did, did you yes. see, you came from the far side of town. Did you see where they're coming from? Yes, um, this is akin to a, um, a scenario that has happened in the past, uh, a, a colossus um, yes. of, of Perforos. Um, Perforos, yes, the Colossus of Acros. But, yes, has but, some, has but some the Colossus the, uh, was def- the Colossus was defending the city. It this makes no sense. Are you saying this uh, is Perforos? No. And then um, you hear all these Perforos <laughs> as the panic. I, uh, I don't want to make any claims like that. I'm just saying this is a similar event. Um, so uh, they're coming from just all angles and, and converging specifically upon the council. I mean, was there something you all did or discussed or? Or spoke rudely of in terms of the gods after we left. And all of a sudden, the crows, the the sound of their cry goes from this random, disordered calling. And as you listen, it it slowly morphs into Mogus, Mogus, Mogus. Ah. Mogus. Oh, all right. <laughs> Agrios. As, as Agrios raises his hand or weapon, which would it be, your hand or your weapon? It would actually be his shield with the symbol of Mogus on it. Okay. Raises his shield and yells, Mogus! An axe forms of this reddish fire and just swings downward at the council members and you see as all of the mages behind them the thaumaturges tilt the shield into it and it hits that shield and hits it so hard the thaumaturges are thrown backwards yes adrastos as soon as adrastos saw the axe he would have grabbed vara and just put the shield up like he knows he's not going to stop it but he's going to try he's going to try absolutely absolutely (laughs) Now, see, this is more similar to Perforos because he's he's forged, right? Fire. <laughs> I think we've angered multiple gods. Can we go inside? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give an option here because you see what's happening. We're not in initiative yet. Is Adrastos? You took an action of grabbing Vara. Anyone else mm. want to do any particular action? As you uh, see, this axe form out of nothing. This giant axe comes down and hits this shield. Magical shield. I was going to say, if Tikaros is nearby, um, Ariana probably would have done the same. She's, she's uh, stealth. Do you cannot yeah. see her? Oh, right, right. You're not You don't there. know that Never she's mind. with yes, you because no. she hid. So. Uh, once, once it hits, she'll probably go if the shield has fallen now that the rest of the mages have fallen. Yeah, as soon as they fly back, hit walls and things, it just dissipates. 
I'm going to cast shield of faith on myself <laughs> for what it's worth. Because okay. a 14 is still better than a 12. There really. you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, Ariana will sort of wherever the, if she's, she's going to sort of position that if it starts swinging it again, she's going to try to drop in front of it. All right. Oh, also, I will cast uh, Mage Armor on myself for my hiding okay. spot. Very good. Okay. Ara is being grabbed and she's totally fine. She's totally great. fine with she's that. Good, good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Protect me. <laughs> <laughs> When the when the axe hits the shield and dissipates it, the axe kind of vanishes and disappears in these these starlight sparkles. It seems very you've seen it somewhere before. You've seen something like it with these sparkles. Whenever magic is involved in something. And then one of the council members, one of them who who didn't really speak up much, but listened they were sitting to the left hand side of parasophia you suddenly see what looks like five fingerprints on their body as they are lifted into the air and you hear a crunching noise as their body compresses and falls to the ground and agrios suddenly feels this overwhelming urge and in a very loud voice says please check the zoom chat you curse and besiege my temple i shall destroy your games and then the body is flung forward and flying towards your group because you're in the middle of the street everyone else is hiding and before it gets to you it is swarmed on by crows who just tear at it and by the time it falls to the ground the only thing left that falls upon you are tattered pieces of body bone and clothing all right i think you were right I, you know, I tend to be. Um, I, once again, can we go inside <laughs> if we're on the uh, if we're if we're listening to Vara now? <laughs> I do we do I see the um, the council member of Mogus? Oh, the Templar, you mean? Yeah, the from the temple. Uh, no, he is not present at this. Okay. Um, I'll just like shake my head and like kind of get inside. With as much authority as I can muster in my roar. All right. Let's have, uh, give me a persuasion on that. Or intimidation. I think with your roar and intimidation yeah. is a better call. Okay, good. Because that's what I have proficiency with. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> Ten. Your command to get inside is heard by many people in the area. The problem is, inside where? And many I people mean, are panicked. Uh, well, well, I know, okay. I know you may have pointed, but people are hiding under tables. So immediately the crowd just runs forth and you have people, there may be people right in front of a doorway, but they are so scared, they run the opposite direction to another doorway. And the road just around fills and you find yourselves being pushed and packed and, and pulled upon. And Tikaros, the area you are hiding, uh, give me another stealth check real quick. Okay. Oh, not as good. 13. Yeah. <laughs> the area you're in, you're hiding, no one sees you for a bit, and then the table that you were behind <laughs> just gets knocked over. No. And still, nobody <laughs> notices you, but you are now out in the open. All right. Okay. I scurry to find some other kind of cover. And <laughs> the crows now have, where they were just sitting <clears throat> and only went after the council member, they are now beginning to peck at people. 
and they are going around and just anyone around, they are avoiding two groups of people, the council members and the five of you. Uh, Ariana's probably going to turn to Agrios and be like, Agrios, you are currently in connection with Mogus. Can you please tell him something good that will make this stop? Uh, stop? <laughs> this stops when everyone's dead, I think. Oh. Fortunate. Or, or, or when we pay him tribute, the temple, we have to go to the temple and make a sacrifice. Great. Let's do that. All right. Where you are located near the council chambers to get to the temple, you are going to have to make your way through about a third of the town. Which crows are flying everywhere. You have... The crows aren't so much a problem for you, except it's hard to see because it's like a cloud of them. It's mainly the people who are in your way. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm For the people in my way, I'm going to use, and I imagine if they clear out, then the crows will follow them. Um, I'm going to use thaumaturgy as I, as I charge board to raise my voice and shout, Move or die! Peasants! Give me an intimidation check, please. I will. And I, I'm going to have you do it at disadvantage because this is a crowd that's already fight, frightened. That's fair. That's fair. In the meantime, can I turn into a draft horse? Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Just explodes out of my shield. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just yeah. on top of it. I'll kind of, I'll kindly, kind of move out of the way before I do it. But I'll, I'll turn into a dry. Almost, almost looks more like a, like a kelpie or a hippocampus. It's got some, some flair to it that you can tell it's far <laughs> But she has made herself a mount in the event that we need to go. Awesome. Yes, I as a else. normal role that would have been great. As at disadvantage, that's a six. Okay. Well, at least it's not just me today. <laughs> well, it, you know, so some people move out of your way, but there are others that they're just so panicked they don't know what to do. It's deer in the headlights as they see this centaur with a shield come char and weapon come charging their direction. And naked, so, by the way, still. And naked uh -huh. still. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck ass naked. Yeah. Question. Uh, question. Um, when they do the sacrifice for the games, is that at the Temple of Mogus, or they do they do it on the the? They do it at the temple, the, the sacrificial altar. Okay. Yeah, this is all lead up to a big procession that goes from yes. Melitus to Aros. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll run, try to move people out of our way as best we can. I'm a horse. Up on. <laughs> I will, I will call it to the temple. Okay, so you're on foot following. Uh, is anyone I'm, I'm is anyone taking speedy. a ride? <laughs> T -cross. Uh, can, so. like, does anyone need to ride me? Is that yeah. need to happen? <laughs> how do I choose between my two? Yeah, how do I choose between my two favorites? What? Sounds like a coin flip moment to me. Oh, I just I, run, I run at both of you. And Vars, Vars a draft horse, so I, if both Ariana and Adras just wanted to ride, they both could probably. Fit. Well, if you're a draft yeah. horse, you're also much taller Yay. than Agrios as far as mounting, which might be a little difficult for Ticarus. Yeah, yeah. Fair. yes. Mm. Fair point. So Ticarus is, is going anyone... to Agrios. Uh, yeah, Ticarus is yep. on Agrios, and then Vara has Vara has intentionally kind of whinnied and looked towards her back um yeah ariana will that will she's uh, to be a mount ariana's gonna grab a flag or something and throw it over vara's back and leap up because she's still not wearing anything and riding bareback bare bottomed not a good idea <laughs> no, no, um, no. 
and then we'll reach down to Ad- uh, Adrastos and help pull him up. Adra- Adrastos is not writing. Adrastos is actually pretty fast. Oh, he's just running? Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, so I, do like have a, I think I have a higher that... running speed than Fair you. Enough. So, mm. Except for Agnes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and Vara right now, probably. Yeah, yeah. Now Vara. I, I, I'm a little bit slower than the two of you, but yeah, I'm fast enough that I'm going to go on foot. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, In that case, yeah. By the way, to anyone... I also have 40 feet. I have 35. Yeah, so close. All right. Wait a minute. Yeah, Centaur, you only have four feet. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Actually, a centipede tour? Yeah, I was going to say, centipede (laughs) tour. I love it. That will now be a creature in this game at some point, damn it. Oh, it will. Oh, it's like a drider, but a centipede? <laughs> oh, good. Oh. Well, is, um, is it like centipede? Like, like it's just a bunch of different Peters? <laughs> <laughs> uh, those of you who are on foot, as you are attempting to make your way, I assume you are making every effort not to injure people. Yeah. Yes. Is this correct? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So everyone, from everyone but... Agrios, that is on foot and running, I need an acrobatics or athletics. So to... I have a question. Yes. Sorry. Go, go ahead and say what you were going to say, and then no. I'll ask. Uh, acrobatics or athletics to see how well you are able to do this without trampling, stamping, or otherwise injuring one of these uh, party goers. Yes, addressed yeah. us. So, um, because of who I am as a character, I think that what are buildings like around here? Like, is it possible for Adrastos to kind of Assassin's Creed this and like get to a building and like hop? Because that's what he would want. He'd want to be out of the press of people. Well, if you uh, look at the main map, you can kind of tell that some places the buildings are close together, some they're not. Um, as you're moving into the temple areas, you know, what you, how far can you leap? Um, I don't know. I think I have special leaping as an athlete, but um, I, just, I just wanted to roll athletics, but do it in such a way that I'm going up instead of through. Okay. Uh, I am good with that. Uh, I will let you roll athletics. <clears throat> I'm going to put you, I'm going to let you roll athletics with an advantage, but if that does not go well for you, it's going to go very not well for you. I'm just going to warn you. That sounds fine. Uh, Agrios, I need an attack roll from you. Oh, no. Because you Uh, are just, you are barreling your way through these people, and I want to see how that goes. So Okay. All right. Well, it did go well for once. (laughs) <laughs> I got a 20 athletics. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm actually going to go ahead and so what's the modifier on that attack? Was it like for the weapon or just my, my hooves? Uh it'll be your hooves. Hooves and shield, okay. basically, I assume. I mean that's up to you if you're oh, okay. using your weapon, you know. Well my my hooves are actually a natural weapon. I do have yep. like a modifier with and everything. Um yep. I'm assuming higher bonus is better for me here, like just in general, as high as possible, right? How many people do you want to injure? <laughs> as as many as get in my way between the, me and the temple. There, there we go. Then I assume you want your bonus. Uh, in that case, I am going to channel divinity for a plus 10 to this roll after rolling. Oh my God. <laughs> which makes it a total of 32. Jesus. Okay. Okay. If anyone looks like they're, if anyone looks like they're, they're too far gone to be saved, I will take them with me as a potential sacrifice. (laughs) All right. All right. Look, if we're gonna do this, somebody's got to go. already have dead. We don't make it full dead. (laughs) I mean, somebody's got to go. Yeah. Addressed. Addressed. Goes. How did you roll? Twenty. Okay. Ariana. I'm riding Vara. Oh, you're riding. Yes. That's right. Um, drive horse strength. I got a 14. Okay. I just rolled straight strength because it doesn't have to pull character sheet. So. Okay. All right. 
So as you're going, Vara, you you try and, and get around a few people, but unfortunately, some of them get bumped by you. You you don't believe you've trampled anyone specifically, at least not that you hit first. However, as Agrios is barreling through this crowd and just all you know, hooves up, stomping and kicking back, you're you're pretty sure you might have stepped on a couple of people that he trampled, but they're pre-trampled, so you know, a little bit of wounding pre-trampled there. for your convenience. Uh, I'm gonna like <laughs> whinny <laughs> and put my head back towards. I assume I still. Oh, I guess it's your choice whenever you're a druid, but I, I I assume I have some kind of saddlebag type thing still holding some of my uh-huh. possessions, and I'll kind of like rear my head back um, towards a little coin purse that I have. <laughs> so so the sentiment is still there of me giving them all coins <laughs> and I'm just, but I'm, I'm very much not used to being a horse so i'm sure i'm a little yeah bumping into people well, i'm a horse <laughs> agrios uh as you are going along this way and looking for the wounded um i'm going to give you three opportunities of something that could be taken for the sacrifice that is wounded as you have stated. There is an old man, uh, appears to be a beggar, sitting with a bowl on the side of the road. Um, he has a cloth across his eyes, and uh, he, he appears to have been pecked very badly by the crows, and as you are going by, your hoof lands square in his lap, and you hear as he screams. Yeah. There is also a young woman um, who takes her young child and tosses them into the crowd to the side as you barrel over the top of her. And there's also a goat that had been forced up against the, the fencing by the crowd, and it's definitely crushed a bit and wounded. Which one do you take? Um, uh, I feel like I feel like I shouldn't be showing. I feel like I feel like the best option here is the least merciful one. Unfortunately, uh, do it. Do the bad thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the the mother. Yeah, you are. The one he wants. All right. Very good. So you battle your way through the crowds. You pick up your uh, intended sacrifice. And Ariana uh, thinks that he's rescuing her. <laughs> in a sense. Yeah, in a way. I'm gonna introduce her to the divine. Did I did I see where the kid got tossed? Uh absolutely if you want to, sure. Okay. Can I make an athletics check to grab him and then jump back on Devara? Uh sure, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to use my um, channel divinity to give myself advantage on athletics and acrobatics. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Uh, that's a three and a six. Um, oh, so that's yeah. 10 total. I don't know. I don't feel that that would be a successful uh, effort. <laughs> I, think, I think you're correct. I think so. you're right. So as, uh, as you dismount and, and run towards the crowd, you hear them shriek and they kind of turn the child and, and shield the child from you. And so as your mount is getting away, you turn back and, and quickly go and, and, and remount. Okay. You arrive at the uh, gates to the sacrificial altar. And it's kind of surprising how quiet it is. Because normally all of the temples would be very busy today. You also note 
the crows are nowhere around the sacrificial altar. Did I make it, by the way? I don't know if we ever established if my building was <laughs> successful. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. you, you got a good enough roll. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I was I hoping, see, like, the horses I was just, hoping you just get smacked like, oh, by a couple bad. of crows or something, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you are you are at the temp the altar. Sir. I, what do we have? Sorry, so um so um Agrius is a worshipper of Mogus. I am not. So I may ask, would Agrius know how this sort of sacrifice is normally performed? There are many You're ways not really to really worshiper of Mogus. There are many ways to perform a ritual sacrifice. Um, basically, I mean, you've seen some of these within your within your tribe of various yep. types. What you would be most familiar with is from a hunting sacrifice, though. The sacrifice of the hunt, which would simply be building a fire, slaughtering the beast, uh, most likely by cutting the throat, uh, bleeding it out, and then roasting it to be consumed by the tribe. Yeah, okay. If that's hey, how you it asked is, me. If that's, if that's yeah. how it is. If that, I read your backstory. <laughs> if you did. And if that's how it is, then that's how it is. Um, I really don't okay. want this to be an evil campaign. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ariana is going to run like deeper into the temple to try to find somebody while this happens. But Okay. Might take him a while to build a fire. I don't know. <laughs> Adrasos is kind of actually just going to protect the lane to make sure that nobody interferes with what's happening here. Okay. He's he he's kind of like checked what's happening. Yeah. He knows what's going on. He's not about it, but he's like, yeah. You uh, to save the many. Agrios will stop, and and if he can make his voice heard over the cacophony. Um, please don't come in. This won't be pretty. Icarus, you were riding on Agrios's back. Are you still there? It's time to get off. Okay, I think so too. And I'm sorry. I would. That's okay. It's it's what you do, and I like you so. And she'll wander off to join Adrastos. Still your internet cannot stutter now, Agrios. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is your moment, Agrios. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> what was that you said? I heard you saying something, but I couldn't make it out. Let me, see. Let me see if I can do something about this. Is it any better right now? Yes, right now it is good. Okay. He carries her in in his in his arms, looks at her and says, You who chose to die for your child. Die now for your city. And she is half dazed, but she... What? I, I don't want to die. <sighs> no one does. <laughs> and, uh... And he starts good? building... Okay. So are you gonna? What are you gonna do with her while you're building the fire? Because you can't use your hooves to do that. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, Vara, Vara will poke her head in. Um, she has now that they've arrived. She'll kind of uh, go back to her regular form. Uh, okay. And she'll kind of look to Agrius. I, I I know you said you wanted to be alone, but. Um, uh, death and that passage is, is also part of what I know and what I do. So uh, if you need an assistance, I, I provide no judgment. 
Are you prepared for this? Oh, yes. And she, she'll kind of hold her coin first up. <laughs> like, I'm always prepared for this. Then hold her. I have work to do. Oh, I will. I'll try and to, he's going to, I'll try very to get her story. Hurt. I'll kind of talk to her. And I know she's dazed, but Farah will go ahead and try to learn about her and, and who she is and, and okay. information that she has about her son or her family to try to make sure that we can do right by her post sacrifice. All right. Agrios, uh, while you're building the fire, so I know you want to add something. Unless it's about building the fire, I want to do something else real quick. All right. Okay. Ariana, uh, you said that you were going looking deeper inside the temple area. Uh, give me yeah. either a survival or a perception as you go about this search. I have a good perception. Um, that is, ooh, um, a 21 perception. As you make your way through the hallways, you hear a noise. It's a repeated kind of a noise coming from somewhere down the hallway. Mm -hmm. I'm running that direction. Right. As you come around a corner, you see Tregor, the Templar from earlier. He has his top armor off, and he is being beaten by two other members of the temple with a whip as they are slashing it. And every time they hit, you see as new wounds open up on his back. And as you enter the room, he looks up and sees you. What? Your god has called down a number of crows, and we need to stop it before the entire city is gone. My god does not use birds. I believe it, but they're doing it in the name of your god, which might be worse. Don't you want to stop it? <sighs> He stands up, and they, they were still hitting him this whole time, yeah. <laughs> going back and forth, and they stop as he stands up, and he flexes and kind of shakes and just spews blood across the room. Yeah. And he walks over, picks up the axe. Now, this, the axe he has in here is not the same one he used in the court. This one looks more like a sharpened edge battle-ready axe. The other one looked a little oh, yeah. more ceremonial. And he lead on. Yeah. <laughs> She'll bolt and head towards back towards the scent. Uh, presumably heading outside, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll have to go back. The only route you know through here is the way you exactly. come in. So it'll be yeah. so you head back out to the altar area where Agrios is making a fire. Okay. And you hear the boom, boom of the feet as he runs behind you and as he comes out into the open area agrios you have completed building the fire and starting it at this point we'll go over to take the woman from vara this is really a time for building a fire agrios i have no choice um, we're just doing what is necessary and i, I think uh, we were hoping for as little people to be part of the sacrifice as possible. Kind of look up at uh, Tregor. He will walk over to Agrios. What is this? I received another message. And what was this message? This one was, You curse and besiege my temple. I shall destroy your games. And Trego will look around and go, And you believe this was Mogus? Who else would it be? Who else has it always been? Do you see anyone standing siege to this temple?
this, this is what I have to do. Is this your victory? Did you take this pitiful thing in battle? Did you hunt? Did you earn? This was my will that I dealt, yes. I am speaking, and he points his axe over, of the woman. Yes, I wounded that woman. That is not what I asked you. Did you hunt her? Did you earn her? Did you defeat her in battle? Must she battle me then? Yes, Adrestus. Can we hear this from outside of the course. temple? Of course. If you haven't gone super far, yeah, you're all within hearing range. And I run outside, because we're in like the temple like district, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to look and see if there are any busted up temples. Like, have there have any of them been besieged? Okay, uh, go ahead and uh, give me a percent. Now, not all temples are in the same area, but there are several in this area. Sure. In in the in, yeah, are there any close by that are? Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, not great. Uh, eight. Yeah, not that you can tell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, the well, only one thing you do notice is the crows do not seem to be going to any of the temples. They are focused on the people. Interesting. Um, she's gonna bump over to Vara, who I know is like holding a person, um, and is gonna kind of kneel down and whisper and be like, "Vara, were there any other?" gods prevalent in Atlantis? Uh, the original? Yes. Well, so Heliot was part of the fall. Um, I, oh, I'm not as familiar, but I assume Thassa would be involved hmm. of the sea. Just, what if we think there's someone Oh, Lantern, sorry. That's what it's right. called. You know, I did, I, I did I, it too. It's like, it's like Atlantis. Like Atlantis, <laughs> yes. In the, a part of Atlant Atlantis. Because um, if, if what Agrios said is, he's never said his name, perhaps, I mean, she doesn't want Agrios to hear this because she's doubting <laughs> it's Mogus. Perhaps there was another god that is mad. As he said, he besieged a temple. There's... And if he was part of a lantern that Heliod destroyed, of course he would destroy the lantern to the Temple of Heliod. Hmm. Is that possible? I suppose so. Uh, I mean, we have a, if we can just get through this, we have a whole wealth of, of resources in terms of a lantern back with the prime. Um, uh, Agrios, kill this Templar. Fight him, battle him. Address us. I was going to say, um, she just feels so very awkward. When, when I she... heard um, what, uh, I can't remember his name, the Trastor? Tregor. Tregor said, Tregor. Um, I would turn to Tikros and I'd say, Tikros, stay here. Keep them out. No way. Fine, come, <laughs> fine then, come with me. And I'll just pick her up and we're going to run inside and I'll put her down. And then, like, not wanting to step on the ceremony here, um, I will walk into the temple, um, drop shield and sword and spread my arms and say, if you need worthy prey, 
Hunt me, son of Mogus. Just standing there, arms spread. <laughs> Option. Where's Agrius going to go? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I hope that he's not frozen. <laughs> Who am I to kill? <laughs> you will feel the hand of this Minotaur on your shoulder. You are a warrior of Mogus. A sacrifice should be worthy of Mogus. It is up to you to determine what is worthy to you. But I will say, if this person was injured and taken as you were on your way here, without intention of purpose. Mogus may not accept it or be pleased. Only you know in your heart the true value of this sacrifice. And, and we're sure the sacrifice needs to be to Mogus. You are in the Temple of Mogus. All the sacrifices here. Or, I, yes, but we're sure that that's what's going on here. You yourself, Tregor, said that Mogus would not use birds. We saw an axe as well. An axe. An axe. Were you there, Agrios? Meanwhile, there. the crows are still <laughs> making a cacophony out there anyway, by the way. I was there. Was it the axe of Mogus? Was it, Tim? Give me a religion check. <laughs> <laughs> With okay. advantage. Once again, I'd like okay. to chime in. The entire council is under threat, so if we could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eighteen. All right, it, Vara. As you say this, and, and Agrios is thinking about the axe. Prager looks over at you. I couldn't give a damn about the council today. <laughs> uh, the council what? actually was sure. totally fine. The ra the crows were leaving them alone. Oh yes. Um. Of course. Oh, Ariana, um, Ephara, god of uh, civilization. Right, she protects cities. Maybe that's someone, maybe we should check her temple. She would, if anything, be mad if another god was striking cities. Anyways, sorry, axe. <laughs> <laughs> Agrios, as you think about this, the axe that was done in the air, while it was a long blade, almost a goat head type axe, it was double-edged. No. No, it was not. Mm. I have been deceived again. How could they speak through me, in my head? If you truly speak the words of Mogus, you may have opened a pathway and someone Nefarious is using the hand marks of the gods. You must be Mr. careful Garzman what take. you profess to others, what you say, and be very wary that you say it is in the name of Mogus. He will take his axe and place it into your hands. Hold this. And he walks back around the outside of the temple wall, and you hear a goat bleeding as he comes back carrying one under his arm. And he takes his axe back from you and hands you the goat. Sacrifice this. Yes, Adrastos. Um, while this is happening, once he once Adrastos has overheard all of this, um, he'll say just out loud. Where's the temple of the god of civilization? 
and he will point in a direction that is hold on i gotta get my directions right <laughs> uh kind of south it's southwest of here okay i will far, um our side of the courtyard i will take tickeros and wrap her arms around my neck it's like hold on tight and we're gonna run in that way i'm like i just don't want to go by myself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so agrios you have your sacrifice if you would like to make if you accept it in trade it's up to you I think he's frozen. I'll Aww. take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Agrios, you were frozen and then it skipped out. What did you say? But I will take it. All right. Very good. So, Traeger will stand, a, stand beside and watch the sacrifice. And he will repeat along with you any words that you say, any chance. Anything that has to do with the sacrifice, he will actively participate as long as you are performing it. Um, I don't have anything prepared for that at the moment. Um, actually, you know what? As he is making this sacrifice, he will add his own plea uh, to the okay. focus. Mogus, some pretender has been using your name to their own ends. This pretender has also made a puppet of me. If you have ever favored me, I ask for your favor now. Make me a weapon to slaughter those who have humiliated me. I offer this sacrifice and everything that I have in return for this singular desire. When you have completed the sacrifice, Traeger takes steps forward and takes blood from it and smears it down the front edge of his blade. He then takes a strip of cloth, puts it across his eyes, turns around facing away from you, and then turns and swings his blade full strength at you. I have to ask first, do you take any action? I will try to deflect my shield. Okay. I am pretty darn sure that a 10 does not hit. It does not. His blade hits your shield and skips upwards. He takes the cloth off and you can see a disappointed look on his face. Mm. Puts his hand on your shoulder. You're a true follower of Mogus. But I'm not sure you are his one. You will come back to be tested. I will. He sticks his hand in the blood and puts it on your face and draws a sign of Mogus using the blood on you. May Mogus sharpen your blade and straighten your aim.
and he will walk back in to the temple, leaving you in the courtyard with your burning sacrifice. And the crows continue overhead as a Drastos with Tikaros in tow, literally, <laughs> <laughs> runs across the town. Again, the crows do not mess with you, but they are still bothering people in the city. And you were headed to the uh, Temple of Afara, I believe. Yes. All right. What would you like to do when you arrive? What are you looking for? I'm looking to see if there's signs of destruction, desecration, anything. No, the temple looks fine. In fact, you notice um, one of the council members and, you, and the person who was standing behind him, uh, his aide, are standing outside of it. And the aide is poised like he's got a spell ready. And Dracos is looking around, you know, watching the sky. Of course, he looks, Dracos. And he looks down and sees you and, what are you doing at the temple? Ravens, an axe. They said the temple was destroyed. This was, I needed to find the one. Why are you not assisting the people of your town? You could be protecting them. Because I am here protecting the temple of Afara. Is your temple so full of artifacts you cannot bring people within? I am here for the temple. Afara will protect the people of the city if she deems worthy. You do mortals a disservice, worm. And I will turn and run back in the direction of Mogus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a quick trip. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and suddenly the sky fills with fire as flaming balls of fire come falling into areas. They do not fall into the crowd, however. They fall down, hit each other, and explode in flames in the air. And with this, it begins to disperse the crows as the fire falls. And by the time the flames get down to the ground, they've gone out. But the birds begin to run away. And you can see a group of thaumaturges in the armor of the Revolutionary Guard here <laughs> as they are casting these fireballs to scare away the crows. Now that is a sign of true bravery. Kikaros. One of the crows, as Adrastos has stopped when seeing this, lands on a post near you and looks at you and turns its head. Empathy. What? And it flies away. Address us. Did you hear that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're there. I you heard it. did. What? Apparently the crow is feeling empathy. They've been known to mimic things from time to time. Adrasus is trying very hard not to be rattled by this for Tikros' sake. <laughs> is it working? I, I don't know. Let would... me roll a deception check. Yeah, roll a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> there is my d20. Uh-oh. If his fur is still wet from the bath, you wouldn't be able to tell how much it scares him. Um... <laughs> 21. Yeah. Oh. He's pretty convincing, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess birds talk now. This has been a very strange day, so okay. It has. We should uh we should check on our comrades. Let's get back. And with this, the crows disperse and the sunlight begins to come through. The bombardment of fireballs <laughs> slackens as the birds leave. I'm still hoofing it, or pawing it back to the temple. Yeah. Well, Ariana, throughout the whole um, 
sacrifice would have stayed quite a ways back as to not piss Mogus off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll sort of hear the fire and look out and go, well, I'm, I'm not sure if Mogus assisted in that, but whoever it was has been somewhat dispersed by the guard. Um, perhaps a uh, Adrastos. What did you find? A coward and a group of mages and a mimicry bird. Seem to take a liking to Tikaros. I think animals like me now. <laughs> you're easy. Harpy you're easy not to like, like you as well. <laughs> What mimicry? Should this one also have something to say? Empathy. Is that right, Gross? Yeah, I had empathy. It's very weird. Uh, another another thing to put on the research pile. Uh, are we any closer to being done with with all of this? Has the sacrifice seemed to help at all when you were outside? I don't believe the gods had any hand in a turning away the crows. That was the work of the Thaumaturgus of the guard. Sure. Certainly not the work of the temple of Afara. Adrastos does not hide the disdain in his voice when he speaks there. <laughs> what do we do now? So are you... Inside the I, Agrius, I don't know. Did you I, stay inside with the sacrifice? I, I, I I'll, I'll say that Agrius comes out at this point. Okay. Yeah. Ariana and will look at him with concern. He has this sort of almost like just deadpan look on his face, like almost numb looking. Oh, Agrius. Um, what? and Vara will hand him a coin. I don't know, I thought maybe we'd want to give it to her. She... I didn't sacrifice her. I was wrong. Mogus didn't speak to me. Mogus may never have spoken to me. We will find who did. I don't know what I am. As you are speaking, having this conversation, the reverent army, don't ask me where I got revolutionary. I must be thinking of the Middle East. But anyway, the reverent <laughs> army, <laughs> uh, a few soldiers and an officer approach. Where is the one called Agrios? Why? The council seeks him. Then they seek all of us. They specifically want him for his part in this. Well, then we'll all ah, him. and he sees, he sees, ah, the centaur. Agrios. The council would what? like to send their appreciation. Your statement as you were running through the crowd to get to the temple burned them with fire. That is what gave the thaumaturges the idea. Well thinking, well thought, well done in, in under a stressful time. What was burned? Did I say that? The birds were burned from me. Did Krista miss that, or did Agrios not say that? It was clearly heard coming from you as you ran to the temple. Your voice echoed. Well, sometimes my voice echoes whether I mean for it to or not. Perhaps. It's when you leaned down to save that woman who you had accidentally stepped on, and you were charging away. 
perhaps no bespoke through you after all, Agrios. You think so? I don't see why not. Well, fire is at the forge. There are too many things going on. Too many gods. I have so much to read. <laughs> But with that, each of the guards salutes you, much in the way Adrastos does. No. Yeah. Well, it was nothing, literally. Perhaps we should return to Elatus's residence. I think that would be best. Yes. Still, two of us, totally naked, one <laughs> in his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Agrios has a fresh coating of blood. So it's he true. should be happy. <laughs> As you make your way back, there's lots of weeping and, and crying as people are dealing with their wounds from these crows. And you can see where claws, pecks, lots of people injured. But they all move aside, <laughs> especially when Agrios comes through the area. <laughs> uh huh. But. Many people, when Agrios walks by, they praise him out loud. Oh. Amazing. Uh, Agrios is bewildered. He's had a very strange day, and this is <laughs> absolutely not what he's used to at all. This has never happened before, ever. Uh, <laughs> he's been almost universally reviled by everyone as far back as he can remember. Um, he just sort of looked at them oddly whenever, like, it, hopefully they're not paying too much attention as they, as they show their appreciation to him because he looks at them with just a, as if they're the strangest things he's ever seen <laughs> as he hurries away through the street. Because you're looking at them with this strange look and kind of this glossy, glassy-eyed thing because you're not used to this and you're a little disoriented. He's, he's receiving messages from the god. He's an oracle. Look <laughs> at the look in his eyes. We have to get out of here. Please, everyone, uh, leave Agrios. He's... Please, stand back. Stand back. Let him through. Let him through. He breaks into a gallop at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask again, are you trying to avoid... No, I'm not going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, this time he is trying to avoid them. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't want anything to do with them at the moment. Uh, you finish your journey. You make your way back to Alitas' house. and um, He is not there, but he has left a message for all of you uh, stating that he thinks it is imperative that you get yourselves together, figure out a plan of where you're headed next. Uh, it sounds like the games have been threatened. Uh, the council is mixed at the moment because of the pronouncement of Agrios as this attack commenced. Um, Obviously, there are some who are blaming Agrios, but also word has gotten back to the council of his call out of how to protect the city. But then there is also feelings of he knew how to protect the city because he's the one who called on this to happen. So there's a lot of debate back and forth at the moment. So he recommends that you stay in and he will be there. And then we will get you on your mission and out of the city. But he thinks it's definitely best if Agrios is not seen for the moment. On the way back, 
I'm presuming Agrios is going directly to the house. Can uh, I stop at the, I guess at, uh, Adrastos and I stop at the baths. Actually, I guess Vara would want to, would have clothes there as well. So perhaps <laughs> we'll, the rest of us will stop by at the baths and grab Agrios grab and your stuff, stuff and the rest of our stuff. Yeah, I would appreciate that. No Very problem. Good. Very, good. Very good. So, uh, Tikaros, while you were stealthing around, I know that you were interested in finding some things. So with your really good stealth skills, um, roll me a d4, please. Okay. A three. You found three items. You can tell me what they are next session. Woohoo! And you were able to steal them successfully. We won't Excellent. say where they came from, but you found <laughs> them along the way. All right. With that, I think uh, we wrap for this evening. I hope everyone had fun and uh, is sufficiently Yay! what the hell are you for thinking sure. in the first place, Tam? <laughs> <laughs>